I had the bright idea of like starting to sneak out. I think I snuck out of my bedroom window more than 20 times in like four years. everyone, I'm your host, Alan Eist, and this is Noche de Pendejadas, your favorite podcast turn talk show en donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritos para platicar y posiblemente sacarles sus trapitos al sol. Hoy les tengo un episodio que no nomás yo, pero yo sé que ustedes allá en casita están súper emocionadas to hear. So with that being said, amigas, please help me welcome tonight's guest, Miriam Cabanillas. Aplausos, amigas. Aplausos, ahorita los que están viendo en casa Quiero que todos se levanten y le den un aplauso A Miriam, ¿cómo estás, amiga? Estoy muy bien, muchas gracias por tenerme No, thank you for coming This has been a long time in the making We've been, I followed you, what, like a couple months ago I started following you because a lot of your girls Were commenting, get Miriam, get Miriam And I was like, ¿Quién es esta Miriam? <laughs> and I clicked on you I started diving into your content y me encantó And it took me, what, like a couple months To hit you up, pero lo bueno que estás aquí I'm so excited de poder conocerte un poquito más And I'm so excited que allá también en casita también te puedan conocer un poquito más. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Antes de que empecemos con el chisme que tenemos preparado el día de hoy, quiero que me cuentes un poquito de lo que hiciste para tu cumpleaños. La semana pasada cumpliste 20 años. ¿Cómo lo celebraste? For my 20th birthday, I didn't really plan much. I went and I got my first photo shoot done and I posted the pictures on the day of my birthday. I think you saw them. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that was my first photo shoot and it was very cute. And then after that, my sister took me out for a really cute brunch. I came home and spent it with my family, something very chill. I didn't, no tenía muchas Like comida tiempo. vibes? Sí, me okay. birria, muy bueno. Actually, that was the day que yo te mandé mensaje, el día que posteaste yes. las fotos. I literally was on my Instagram, you guys. Eran como ya las 10 de la noche. No me acuerdo cuándo te mandé el mensaje. But I started seeing all your pictures on my feed. And I was like, you know what? Voy a aprovechar el momento para decirle happy birthday y decirle que si querías venir al programa. Y gracias a Dios, amiga, sí lo hizo. Nos cuentas que for your 20th, you didn't do anything crazy. Do you have anything planned or do you want to do anything crazy para tus 21? Oh, yes. ¿Qué tienes de plan, amigas? Entonces, es como no hice nada este año, pienso que para el otro año fiesta con grupo y todo. There you go, yes. no, no, lo que se salvó este año, amigas, el año que viene lo va, lo va a gastar. Like, yes, cause puro corridos. You, you like, like corridos? corridos? Yes, I'm I like corridos. more, I mean, I like music, like Mexican music, uh -huh. but like no soy de ese tipo de persona que like on the daily I'm like bumping corridos, okay. but I do like fiestas with like a grupo, yeah. I like fiestas with a banda, literally, que fue la semana pasada, tuvimos una fiesta con nuestras amistades. It was literally like a 10 people kickback. Okay. And with that 10 people kickback, we got a banda y nos la pasamos Yeah. Bien chingón, amigas. I feel like music en vivo es lo mejor. Mm -hmm. so ya para empezar el chisme del día de hoy, amigas, vamos a empezar con la primera pregunta que a mí me gusta empezar with, que siento como que con esta pregunta ustedes y yo podemos conocer un poquito más a Miriam. So vamos a empezar with the question que yo siempre empiezo with, how was Miriam growing up? Well, I grew up an immigrant child in the U.S., actually. I was born in Sinaloa. Soy de un pueblo que se llama Cozala. No sé si has escuchado. Mm -hmm. Probably not, no. It's like probably like two hours, three hours away from Culiacán. Um, so yeah, I grew, up, I grew up in the US. I, I came here when I was two years old. And I always grew up being the very gullible, naive child. I feel like you told me the sky was green and I thought the sky was green. And I remember um, growing up, they would tell me, oh, si tomas mucha coca, te vas a hacer prietita. And I was like really obsessed with, with coca. So I would always um, want to, I was always drinking coke. Y mi tío, para dejarme de, de que tomara de coca, me, me dijo que, Miriam, te vas a hacer más prieta. I'm like, no más coca, ya no me den. And I, I swore my skin was getting lighter. Is that an actual thing? No, <laughs> not you swearing. You're like, oh my God, me I'm estoy like, aclarando. <laughs> ah, no, that's yeah. crazy. I believed it because I stopped drinking Coke for But a while. But it's not like an actual thing. No. Nomás te decían para que ya la dejara la coca. Sí. That's no crazy. Nomás para dejar la coca. Nos la cuentas poquito. un poquito de que pues tú a los dos años, tu papá, tus papás se trajeron de México a los Estados Unidos. How was life living in the States? Obviamente nos cuentas that you are undocumented. Do you feel like that created a struggle or like it made you feel like any different than everyone around you well when i realized yes i think the first time i realized that i wasn't that i was an undocumented child and different from everyone else was when i turned like 10 years old 
and I saw my brothers go to Mexico and I couldn't go. Yeah. So I was like, why can't I go? <laughs> like, por qué no me llevan a mí? Y pues, I understood it. Y luego, and I didn't know much of it though. Yeah. So I guess like, I didn't know growing up as a little girl. Once I got older and I realized that it wasn't going to be easy for me to travel or to um, get into a school or to um, get like a normal job. I felt different, obviously. Yeah. It was like, why, why can't I go with my brothers and see Mexico? Because all my cousins were going. It's me and my other cousin, and it's just us two that. No. Se iban ellos para el verano y nosotras. Solitas, solitas. en casa. <laughs> ¿Cuántos hermanas y hermanas tienes? Tengo tres hermanos y una hermana. So she's my stepsister, and I didn't even grow up with her, actually. I met her later in my life. So growing up, I always very much wanted a sister, and I never had that. I was always the only girl. I was, it was me and my three younger brothers, and I feel like I didn't realize that I was an undocumented child until a little bit later. I mean, I was like 10 yeah. years old. Um, I mean, did you always know? Like, I always I know, knew. Yeah. Porque yo me acuerdo exactamente hasta como entramos. Like, oh, literally really? everything. Pues yo me vine ya aquí en el kinder. Y yo siento como que siempre he sido como un niño bien consciente. Like, I've always been okay. very, like, aware of what's going on. And when we first came to the States, nosotros somos cuatro. Dos de mis hermanos tienen papeles y dos no. So el más grande y el más chiquito que soy yo no tenemos papeles. So to me, it always bothered me. Igual como tú dices que yeah. tus hermanos iban de vacaciones y tú ahí aplastada en la casa. Mm -hmm. Así me sentía yo. I would always be like, what the fuck? Why not me? Y hasta me enojaba. Llegó, llegó un punto where I would even blame my parents. Me acuerdo que cuando yo iba a nacer, Uh, mi mamá y mi papá ya estaban aquí. They already, had a, they already had started like their life aquí en los Estados Unidos. Y tenían en ese tiempo a todos mis siblings menos a mí. And during that time, antes de que yo naciera, maybe like months before I was even conceived, I guess, deportaron a mi papá. They deported my dad. And obviamente mi mamá vendió todo. No teníamos mucha familia aquí. So my mom literally sold everything. They had just gotten their apartment. They had just gotten like a bunch of new furniture. Vendió todo. No le dieron lo que gastó, pero lo vendió todo para irse para México con mis siblings. And months later, salió embarazada oh. y nací yo. Soy yo de chiquito. Yo me acuerdo that I always held like this grudge versus with my mom. More with my mom, not really with my dad. It was always like, ¿por qué no te puedes esperar? Me hubieras tenido aquí. And I always would tell my mom that y le reclamaba. But then later on, ya cuando empecé a crecer, like obviously empecé a entender las cosas. And also because my mom was like, si no, si me hubiera quedado, ¿quién me iba a embarazar? Si tu papá en México. Was that ever like a thing for you where you kind of blamed your parents? Que por qué tus hermanos sí nacieron aquí? Y tú no? No, actually, because I didn't realize I was a little older. So um, at first I was like, I didn't know any of that. And like I said, I've always been like this little, like, I've always been this little girl who lives in a bubble. I didn't think much about anything. I always thought like rainbow sunshines, everything, unicorns, todo. Eso, nunca pensé en anything. I, like yeah. you said, you were, you're a very conscious person or a conscious kid. I was not. Like I was just living my life. Y no me di cuenta hasta que ya como que cumplí 10 años y entonces... I, I guess I understood more yeah. then, you know, because I was a little older already. So I was like, oh, pues, it, I was the first child. So I was like, I was the first child and me, uh, I, I felt like I was yeah. the reason that they decided to come out here. When you were in school, would you kind of tell your friends that you weren't born here or would you kind of like keep that a secret? I would always, I, I was always scared to tell anyone. Yeah. I was like, this is my secret. I can't tell anyone that I wasn't born in the United States. Like, I'm, I was scared. Yeah. I was like, I never want to leave the U.S. It's my home. So it's yeah. like the only thing I know, like. Even now, like, I would love to visit Mexico. I would not want to live there. This is my home. So, um, yeah. I've Was there ever a moment in school where you're like, you know what, I got caught up or le tuve que decir a alguien because I got stuck in a sticky situation? Like, did you ever have to tell anyone about your actual, like, legal status? I feel like there was a couple times that, like, people would ask me and I gave different answers <laughs> and people were like, bitch, you're lying. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, what the fuck? Like, where the fuck are you from? You're like, no, nací en Italia. Ay, otra vez, nací en China. I'm like, bonjour. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so you would kind of lie? Yeah. How was I that would. like cuando te cacharon? Well, I don't think they said nothing. They were just like, like, así They're como que, yeah, like, okay. But ya yeah, cuando crecí más, I was like, okay, well, whatever. Like, I was born in the U.S. And I always thought it was something that I would get made fun of yeah. for too. So I also didn't want to say anything. But then growing up and also seeing that like kids would come from Mexico to the schools and like learn how to speak English and yeah. stuff. Like I, um, Spanish was also my first language. And that's why I feel like I don't know how to speak English or Spanish. Like <laughs> Los dos, the Spanglish, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I si no me trago con el inglés, me trago con español, or I speak them all mixed up. 
I can't. Me estabas contando anoche that unfortunately you weren't able to apply for DACA. Cuéntanos un poquito de eso. ¿Cuándo te das cuenta del programa? How was your process like? ¿Y cómo te diste cuenta de que no te podían aprobar? I think that's like one thing that really hit me was DACA. I had this hope as a little girl, like, oh, mi mamá me decía, hay un programa, cuando cumplas 16 años, vas a poder aplicar y te van a dar para que puedas trabajar, para que puedas estar aquí, para que puedas estudiar. Y yo bien feliz. I found out about it because of my mom, and I knew my cousins um, from, I have cousins in LA who also are under DACA, and they were, they're already older, so yeah. they were able to apply like you, and they got accepted, they have their DACA. And so I had that hope because I saw them have it, yeah. I thought I would have it too. And then I turned 16, and that was already when Trump was president. I believe he was president mm -hmm. for like a year already, I'm not sure. And um, he closed it down. And with him closing it down, I felt like, what am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do here in the U.S.? I'm like, now I should move to Mexico. Yeah. I'm like, ya me voy, agarro mis delitos y me voy. <laughs> then when I realized I wasn't going to be able to apply, I was like, well, what am I going to do now? Um, a year went by. I was still in high school, though, yeah. so it wasn't like... No tenía que trabajar todavía. So I was like, well, I can't do nothing of it right now. Like, I'm just going to keep doing this. Luego mi mamá me dice que, que lo cerraron. Y pues se me acabó la esperanza de eso hasta que luego uh, Biden opened it again. And I believe I was 17, 18 years old. I applied for it right so quick. Like, my dad and my mom were like, you're on that. Like, yeah. if there's something about my mom and my dad, is like, if you have the opportunity for something special, go take it, like, right when you can. So they took me to do everything that I could do. And we got all the way to the thumbprints. I don't know what's after that. Because after that, they stopped my process. I guess the um, whole DACA program got shut down again. And so right now, whenever I go on the website to check my status, it's just like always like processing. Like pending yeah. vibes? <gasps> yeah. And so I was 18 when that, it was just like stopped. Me and my cousin who also applied, we were like, okay, well, what now? Like what's gonna happen to us now? Because they it had like stopped. And so at this point I was 18, I had um, graduated high school. So now I was like thinking about how, what I was gonna do next. I thought I wasn't even gonna be able to apply for college because of uh, I didn't have DACA, but thankfully I applied for financial aid through FAFSA and um, I was able to get financial aid through that. So I did, I was able to go to college, which yeah. is a good thing. Um, pero luego for my job situation, I was like, I'm 18 and there's like a lot of factors that play into the, Uh, w the reasons why I wanted to have a job already and even like way bef years before like I really wanted a job I really wanted to start making my own money and it was such a frustration to me that I couldn't that I, I felt like I felt trapped I felt like I was in one place that I couldn't get out of because there was no yeah no you idea. felt limited yeah yeah I felt so limited and my younger brother got a job before me I was like what am I doing I'm, yeah. I felt like like what am I doing y luego empecé a hacer maquillaje. I was already doing makeup, and um, I think this was when my TikToks were already like doing good. I wasn't making money from TikTok yet. I decidí, decidí um, ponerme a hacer maquillaje los fines de semana, booking appointments, and I was doing that for a couple months until I started to grow more on social media, and I, I kind of stopped, and I focused more on the social media side, and I started making money on social media, and that's how that started. Y ahí encontré como que mi esperanza. I found an opportunity on social media, which was actually crazy the way that that even um, came to be. It was so unexpected, and with that, I was like, if this opportunity is right in front of me right now, I'm gonna take that and try to do the most out of it because this could lead to something big for me when I thought I had no chance in this Yeah. In this country, I was doing good with social media. The hell, that's it. I left booking appointments. Um, And the rest is history. Rest is yeah, like, andas yeah. trabaja y trabaja yeah. on social media. Nos cuentas un poquito that the first time you applied for DACA, you know, you were doing the process and Trump, you know, shut down the program. Cuando pasa eso, you were just, what, like 16 at the time, the first time you tried applying? Yes. When that happens, do you feel like you lost all hope and that kind of led you into almost like not wanting to go full force with school or not even like, te empezas a poner como rebelde, like, ¿pa' qué me voy a poner las pilas en la escuela si no tengo esperanza? No, I always thought that there is always something you can do about any situation that you're in in your life. And no es como que, o, o sea, si me dolió y me derrotó un poco, pero no, no me di por vencida, me puse a pensar en lo que puedo hacer. I feel like that's something about me and that I get from my parents that, like, think outside the box, think what you can do that you think, that you may think, that it may seem like it's impossible. And it's, it's really not yeah. because, you know, the opportunities are there. The chances are there. You have to take them. Um, I feel like I feel like no. Um, 
eh, si era rebelde eran por otras cosas, yeah. no por eso. Being a ch an immigrant child makes you think a lot. Like when you realize what your position is, what your status is in this country, it makes you think a lot. And it kind of, and especially when you don't let, when you don't give up, it me, como que te hace, it boosts you yeah. up. I feel like it boosts you up. It makes you feel good que no te estás derrotando, que le estás echando ganas, que quieres hacer algo más para salir adelante. Because thinking about it, my parents came here to give us a better life. Why am I gonna just that me por vencida, you yeah. know? There's there's always a way. And like, I feel like you're a, a great example of doing that because como tú nos cuentas, you kind of felt limited when you turned 18, but you're like, you know what, chinga su madre, yo le voy a echar ganas porque voy a salir adelante porque lo voy a hacer. Nos cuentas un poquito, you know, that you grew up being the oldest and being the only girl. ¿Cómo fue eso? Cuéntanos un poquito de eso. Do you feel like because you were the only girl were you kind of like the princess of the house? Tus hermanos siempre were like kind of protecting you. How was that like growing up? Growing up, I always shared a room with my brothers, which is very annoying. If you know, you know. <laughs> and I always wanted my own room and I always wanted a sister. You know, I knew of my stepsister all my life, but I did, I never met her. I knew nothing of her, but I knew who she, I knew that she was there. Yeah. Y, yeah, I always wanted a little sister. Y era como su, era su mam, era, yo era la mamá para mis hermanos también, yeah. because my mom trabajaba, no estaba en la casa después de la escuela. Um, like I said, now I feel like now my baby brother, he's seven. My, I have to help him with his homework. Back then when I was a little girl, no one helped me with my yeah. homework. And I, my first language was Spanish. My brother went to school already speaking English. So I'm like, <laughs> You're like, Latin is fácil. I did love being the only girl because I feel like I was always very spoiled by my dad. Um, I was always, I grew up being a daddy's girl. Me and my dad grew up um, being very close together. I was always his little girl. Siempre jugaba así la doctora con yeah. él porque tenía, he had a eye surgery and he siempre jugaba la doctora con él. Um, le hacía de piojitos. We were just always together and he was like, it was my pride and joy. Um, si yo le decía que quería algo, él me lo daba. Si yo le decía que quería cinco dólares, me daba veinte. Así, I was his little girl. And so growing up, that's how I was. Um, I was the princess of the family. I was the only girl. And it was basically just me and my two brothers growing up. And then my baby brother came along later on when I turned um, 14, maybe. Yeah. Tú desde chiquita, you had that responsibility handed to you. Like, mija, ayúdame con los niños. Did you like that? Or did you kind of feel like, you know what? No son mis hijos. ¿Por qué los ando cuidando yo? Uh, no me molestaba. I feel like I was very always... Siempre la, era la niña que les gustaba. Me, me gustaba ayudarles a mis papás. Yeah. Me gustaba ayudarle a mis tíos. Yo me acuerdo que iba a la casa de mis tíos y les... So they take it as very much respect when you offer to serve yeah. them food as men. So, yo siempre les ofrecía servirles comida y tenía como 10 años y ellos bien sorprendidos que, oh, um, esta no, iría, no haría eso. Mira que, que, buen, que buena la Miriam por yeah. ofrecerme comida y así. I feel like I was always like that growing up because I started taking care of my baby brother. Taking care of them, my younger brothers wasn't too bad because we weren't too far apart. Yeah. So, they knew how to do everything. They, they did a lot of the things. Um, for themselves, I just, I served them food, I made sure they were good, I made sure they did their homework, the basic things, yeah. so that wasn't too much. Um, once my baby brother came along, um, I was like taking care of him since like three months old. I think he was like three months, no, I'm, I'm lying, I'm like, I'm kidding. like since he came out the womb. <laughs> ah, you have a doctor delivering him, imagine. Es que pues, lo que yo me acuerdo es que estaba bien chiquito, o sea, no podía ni caminar when I was taking care of him. Todavía le tenía que cambiar los pañales, darle de comer. You would do all that? Yeah, le cambiaba los pañales, I would feed him his bottle, I would put him to bed because my mom would come home late. I was always the um, little girl who said that I wanted to have kids young. After I started taking care of my big brother and I saw what it was, taking care of a baby, yeah, me dejé de esa idea, dije no. You're no like, quiero Norma, ya tuve un hijo, ya lo creé, ya no quiero he más. He was basically yeah, yeah. like my kid, and I'm, like, it's not, I don't want people to think that, like, my mom put all the responsibility yeah, on you. No. Yeah, yeah. Because when she was home, it was just her taking yeah. care of him. But I obviously, you know, the older sibling, ¿por qué no ayudar si puedo? No, no estaba haciendo nada, entonces sí le ayudaba mucho a mi mamá a cuidar a mi hermano menor. Y sí me gustaba, sí me gustaba, pero it also dragged me away yeah. from wanting to be such a young mom, which I think is good. It's good. Ya te asustó. Yes, ya, pues asustó. obviamente tú a bueno. tus 20 años no tienes hijos. Nos sí. cuentas un poquito de eso. You know, how old were you when you were already helping your mom cuando nació tu hermano? I was like 14. Okay, 14, so you were already like in that edad where you kind of wanted to go out and play with your girls, pero en vez estabas en casa cuidando al hermano. That's another thing. I grew up with very strict parents, so um, I was always a princess. And even then, like even growing up with strict parents, I was 
I feel like I always tried. I always tried to be yeah. a good girl. Like I had a very much respect for my parents. Um, I was a very good girl growing up. I'd like to say I feel like I was very naive. Me dejaba mucho de la gente. Yeah. When I was in elementary school, I we I was in first grade and we were walking back from lunch. I had one a uh, watch from the treasure box. I was all happy. Like I showed my friend, um, Deja. Like Deja, look at my watch. I got it from the treasure box. She was like. Wow, how pretty. Give it to me. I was like, no, I, it's mine. I got it. And she was like, I'm going to tell the teacher. <gasps> I was like, okay, here. Y se lo I dices. won it from the treasure box. Y se lo di. Ay, amiga, bien mensa. Because <laughs> you were scared you? that they were going to tell the teacher. Well, and the teacher gave it to me <laughs> from the treasure box. Ay, amiga. When I tell you, I was naive and gullible. Like, I was so naive and gullible. That's why I feel like no me daba cuenta de lo mal que estaba yeah, yeah. alrededor de mí. No más puro, yo puro lo bueno, puro lo positivo. Yeah, yeah. Tú no más escuchabas algo en yes, yes, yes. Ok, lo hago. Nos cuentas de que, pues, obviamente, tú le ayudabas mucho a tus papás. And I feel like a lot of the time, especially when I have convos with, like, people, like, with guests that are the oldest sibling, siempre me dicen que, pues, it was kind of almost like a task that they had to do because sus papás would be like, Oh, me tienes que ayudar, me tienes. Do you feel like your parents appreciated like growing up, like in la ayuda que les dabas, kind of like where they'd be like, gracias mija por ayudarnos? Or was it kind of like a thing where it was kind of like, oh, it just happens because it happens? Pues si me lo agradecían. I mean, I know they, like deep down in them, they were like, oh, pues qué bueno que sí nos quiere ayudar. Because yeah. I do know, of, and I don't think they realize this, but I do know of a lot of people who have like, younger um, daughter or daughters who they want them to take care of their kids and yeah. le dicen que no, que no quieren y que no lo van a hacer. Pero yo, yo sí, um, yo sí lo hacía con mucho gusto and I feel like I, it was, it got to a point because I grew up with strict parents. It got to a point where, well, I didn't feel like yeah. they were, it, I showed them that I was a good girl. I showed them that I respected them. I showed them um, I was very helpful to them. Yeah. Y luego, they were very strict with me. I got to a point, like you said, I wanted to go out with my girlfriends. I wanted to like, um, have some fun. No me dejaban salir para nada. Yo nunca podía salir. It got to a point where I couldn't even go out with my cousin sometimes. Like, it, and not just because of friends. You know, you understand friends because, oh, no conozco tus yeah, amigas. Yeah, yeah. Pero sometimes I wouldn't even be able to go out with my cousin. So then I felt like, well, what, why am I being such, so good to yeah. you for them? Like, I'm a very good girl. I help you out with um, our our family. I help you out with our family. I I try my best. Um, I do what I have to do. I have good grades. Yeah. Y no me dejaban hacer. Y me hacía. Yeah. No, I, I felt, I feel like that's something. And even now I'm like realizing like, wow, like I did do all that y no me dejaban salir. And it was always their worry. Y pues entiende eso, but it's also like to you. Yeah. In the moment when you're growing up, you feel like, well, I'm a good girl. Like why, why can't I be out with my friends like they are? Why can't I do this like they are? You know? Tienes una media hermana que nos estabas contando that you really didn't grow up with her being in your life. ¿Qué fue el punto donde tú, you know, la conociste? Or what was the reason why you guys met? Was it, was it you wanting to, like, meet your sister? Or cómo fue todo eso? I turned 14 and I was going into high school. I moved a couple times when I was um, growing up. I grew up in Riverside. Um, I moved to Ontario from there. I went to school there for like a semester and then I moved to Myrna Valley. So I've always been in the IE, but I moved to different cities when I in middle school. So I feel like because, you know, that's the age that you're like um, making your friends yeah, yeah, and like yeah. really establishing them. That's why I feel like I never established like more long term yeah, friendships. Yeah. When we finally moved to Myrna Valley and it was uh, stable, my dad, this was when he had came back and we were actually became a more stable family. We were living all together and in the couple months of starting high school, mi papá me dice que mi hermana, su mamá quería que se viniera para los Estados Unidos a estudiar aquí. Entonces, I was like through the roof happy. Yeah. I was like, yes, I'm going to have a sister. Finally, like I been wanting to have a sister my whole life. I was like, I had just got in my own room because yeah. we moved into a bigger house. So I had just got in my own room for the first time. I was like, I don't even care that I have to share my room that I just got it. I will share it, just bringing my sister. Yeah, I was yeah. like, tráemela ya. And she was a year older than me, so we started high school together. And that's when we started together. I, I remember she was she was very embarrassed to hang out with me. Because ¿Por qué? she didn't want to be with me and my friends. Y luego, porque ella es de allá de México, yeah, yeah, yeah. she has a whole different um, a whole different vibe, a whole different yeah. way of being. Y como que nunca, she, she never felt like she could click with um, no cabía con tu grupo. Yeah, pues, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she felt like she didn't click with us. Y aparte, como que no quería andar con su hermana menor. I'm like, okay. 
Pero yo siempre quería andar con ella. Yeah, yo yeah. siempre que quería de ella. It's not that she didn't like, I guess, want to be with me. Yeah. I think. <laughs> But, You're like, um, I hope. I, I hope. She was like, no, I didn't want to be with you. <laughs> no, seriously. We started high school together and our relationship was like, it wasn't what I thought it yeah. would have been because I thought we would be more closer. But we were already teenagers. Yeah. So we were already like very different. We didn't get to like establish that connection as like when we were young. So I feel like we were already very different. We had different ways of seeing different things. We would bump heads. I, I feel like we would bump heads a lot. We would fight a, a lot. Um, we would argue a lot. We shared the same room, obviously. But at the end of the day, we went through the same things in the same household yeah. together. So I feel like that made us connect in a way. Um, and I do have a lot of love for her. I, I feel like I do have a lot of love for her. But, you know, the little... The little incident that happened between us um, did change. I feel like that did change a lot of our relationship. Yeah. Um, but she's my sister at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. She's always going to be my life. And I feel like why waste time, like, holding grudges or, like, not, like, trying to get to a better point when both of you, you know, yeah. both of you have love for each other. Even I feel like we just grew up very differently. We grew up very differently. So it just... It kind of like made us bump heads. Nos cuentas un poquito de eso. También nos estabas contando de que tú de muy chiquita eras a daddy's girl. Cuando your sister came into the picture, did that change? Did you ever feel some type of jealousy because now you were sharing your dad with another, you know, with your sister? ¿Cómo fue eso para ti? I feel like when my sister came into the picture, the household like got toxic. And not to like blame it on her, it was more my dad's change. Um, because even a little bit before she had moved in with us, there was a lot of times in my life where my dad was absent. And whenever he came present again in my life, um, I feel like, so not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna like um, have anyone misunderstand this. It's not that my dad was absent because he wanted to be absent. It was just issues going on where he had to be absent. Um, and so when we were finally all together again, I noticed In the time where, he, in the time of his absence, I was already a teenager, so I was seeing things for what they really were. I saw his character for what it really was. I feel like I, I found of things that kind of like changed my viewpoint on him. And then cuando regresó con nosotros, I feel like he also had like a big change. Um, especially when my sister came into the picture, it, he became very toxic. And I want to say toxic in the way that like, he, she came from Mexico, obviously. Okay. He had an image of my sister, um, so he didn't trust her. He didn't trust her and he kind of like wanted to discipline her in a way. But it was like through the roof. Um, he would find anything to nag at with her. He would also find things to nag at with me. Yeah. Because if it was gonna, if he was gonna treat one of his daughters like that, he was gonna treat me like that too, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like it was always him nagging at both of us. It was very toxic where the point, he was like very controlling. And you understand a, a parent's point of view, you know, because Um, you see that you see that they're just trying to take care of you. You see that they want the best for you. But I feel like it's to an extent, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. it's always to an extent. I feel like we never felt even like comfortable in our own home. I feel like we could never lock the room in our door. Because uh, you would get mad? Our, yeah, our room door, we could never lock it. Like, I, I, could, I was never able to lock it until I was like 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A veces nos esforzaba que estuviéramos en la sala, nomás porque él quería que no estuviéramos haciendo algo en el cuarto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay, no sé qué se imaginaba, pero siempre se imaginaba lo peor. Por imaginarse lo peor, nos trataba de manera como muy... Nos afectó, you know? Yeah, yeah, nos yeah. afectó, and it, it made us hold a grudge towards him. I felt like I was always, growing up, I was always this good girl. I was always showing him that I was um, his girl little girl, you know, um, his daughter that respected him, that loved him, that helped him out. Y pues, seeing how that relationship changed, at coming from a little girl, being so attached to her dad, being a daddy's girl, and then growing up to completely like just, kind of like just realizing that things aren't all rainbows and sunshine. Your dad isn't the perfect person. Your dad comes with mistakes. He's made mistakes. And now he's also acting yeah in ways towards you he's acting all these ways towards you not treating you the same either like making you feel like he he's not even there yeah, anymore yeah, yeah, you know because yeah. you don't even feel like you want to go to him no more because he's just always nagging at you you know that's how it felt for a long time i never really felt jealous of the relationship between my dad and my sister um i'm more i think we weren't even focused on that because yeah. we were just so focused on what we were going through with my dad like it was honestly like all through our high school years we felt very trapped And this is something that I say we because me and my sister relate to it together. Yeah. We both went through it. We were in some ways 
rebellious. All of the times we probably deserved like five, five of the, five times, of the yeah. things, you know, because we were teenagers. We did do a little couple things here and there, but it was his toxicity was so extreme. It was so draining to be in the household. I remember I learned, I learned his footsteps. Like I, I learned his footsteps. When like I was, the sound yeah. of his footsteps. I learned the sound of his footsteps. I learned the sound of his doorknob to his room. I, I like his chanclas. I knew the sound of his yeah. chanclas y lo que hacían because um, I always felt scared. Like I, it, it was like that. In yeah, my yeah. own house, I felt scared that I was about to get in trouble for literally anything yeah. or I was about to like get called out for anything or anything like that. It you was, were like walking on eggshells kind of like around your dad. Sí. ¿Cómo sientes que eso te afectó a ti? Not just like in your teen years, but also now as an adult. Well, now as an adult, I feel like, I feel like it's just very, it's, it's, it stays with you. It's yeah. traumatizing and it kind of makes you think that you, you don't want that for your future. You don't want to be in that space. I feel like I don't want to be in a space where I'm going to feel like yeah, that, yeah. you know, as an adult, it's changed me in the way that I'm not going to let myself stay in an environment that's not positive to yeah, me. Yeah, it's yeah. not good for me and I feel like it's not helping me grow if anything it's like draining me deteriorating me you know how's your relationship with him now do you feel like after going through all that do you feel like now as an adult you're able to like have a better relationship with him or is there almost no relationship with him because of everything you guys kind of went through our relationship changed a lot I think um the relationship with my dad is what hurts me the most out of everything because I feel like even even now it's very good but he he has changed a lot in many ways. With DACA, I felt trapped because I couldn't find a job. Yeah. With my dad, I felt trapped because I feel like he was too control. Like I understand that a parent should be controlling with their children to an extent. Um, but when it was with him, all I was thinking about was finding ways to somehow, when I was able to, when I turned 18 or when I turned, when I got the opportunity to like get myself out of this situation, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I felt like I needed money for that. I felt like he felt like he was so controlling. I felt like it was him controlling me so much in my life because he felt like he had the financial. Like you needed him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He had the financial like help, um, help on, like, on me, you know? He obviamente me mantenió toda mi vida. Y yo creo que eso lo hizo a él pensar, lo, lo hace él pensar que pues me, me tenía así, you know, yeah, así, yeah, yeah. you know? And it, I understand it. He's my dad, but it, just if you have strict parents and if you know to the extent that strict, strict and toxic parents go to, it's not healthy and it's not positive. So I feel like our relationship has, it hasn't been the same. I feel like it will never be the same from when I was a little girl because I already have those views on my dad. I've already seen past mistakes, mistakes that I'm I'm not like, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to mention on here because I've, I don't, you know, they're one, they're past two, I've gotten over them three. I still respect him as a father. I feel like I learned a lot from seeing his mistakes. And even though I view him differently, I see him for who he really is. Um, there's always going to be that respect because at the end of the day, he was always there for me. I always had yeah. food. I, I always had a roof um, under my head. Um, and he did genuinely love me. And I feel like I had I just had to learn that this first time living too, I had to learn that he views things the way that he views things and he does things that he does because of how he grew up, yeah. of how um, his childhood was. And there's nothing that he can do about yeah. that because that's la vida que lo tocó a él. Y por eso trato de no juzgarlo tanto. Yeah. Y lo quiero. Yeah. Si lo quiero y siempre va a ser mi papá. Um, I just feel like the relationship just hurt me a lot because yeah. going from being his little girl to growing up and seeing him in different ways and seeing how different he became with me and how um, much like his actions, his mistakes and his words hurt me throughout the years. I feel like it'll, it, it, it might not be ever be the same, you know, but there's always going to be that. That love that because love. you're yes. your dad. You know, nos cuentas un poquito que ya tu adulta, you kind of are in a place where you're kind of like, you know what, if having not really a relationship but being around you too much is going to cause me distress is going to cause me anxiety or depression tú te alejas you know which is great because you're putting boundaries now as an adult where you're like you know what voy a poner these boundaries because i want my mental and emotional peace which is what you do have you ever had a convo with him ya de adulta where you're like look dad um I feel this way, you made me feel this way towards you, or is it a convo que ya ahora de adulta ni tú ni él tocan la conversación? It makes it hard, because coming back to the way that he is, you 
you can't have a conversation with him if he views things a certain way and you try telling him another way. No, 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 no hay caso. Entonces, yo lo acepto. Él, he aprendido a aceptar como es, aceptar lo que él piensa. Y pues, si así quiere ser él, pues, ni modo. You know, I've learned that I can't control people. I can't control things around me. I can only control myself and what I do and what yeah. I think. I feel like I've had tried to have convos with him, but it no sirve, you know? Yeah. Y pues, I feel like I just have to be the type of person that accepts it and just still respects him, loves him, and that's how it has to be. And that's what makes it hard now because I feel like growing up, Um, you know, being a rebellious teenager, I always felt like I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of this place as fast as I can. When I turn 18, I'm going to do something about my life. I'm going to show him that I can be on my own. And now after overcoming all of those, like, even though, yeah, we have been through some stuff um, with my dad and like in our in our family in general or personal things, I want to be closer to my family. I want to yeah. cherish the moments that I could with my family. I'm only 20 and I feel like as a teenager, because of not viewing things and not processing my emotions the right way, I felt like I let all of those things um, not let me see things for a clear way, in a more positive way. I feel like after I overcame all those things, I started to see everything in a positive way. I started to want to be around my family a lot more, around my brothers a lot more. I wanted to grow a lot more as a person. I had more interest in um, growing as a person, you yeah, know, yeah. getting to know new things, seeing new things. And my family has become the most, um, and they always have been, but I feel like after going through all these things and after getting myself out of such a bad mental state, um, now I ap aprecio yeah. a mi familia yeah. mucho más. Los aprecio con todo mi corazón y aprecio a, a, aprecio a mi mamá yeah. y hasta mi papá. Aunque hemos pasado por muchas cosas difíciles, nuestra relación no ha sido la mejor relación. Um, Pero I, lo aceptas. Yeah, lo, yeah. lo acepto y de todas maneras los quiero ahí. Y, and I feel like that's where, when you ask me, um, does it make it hard to talk to your dad even now? Yes, it does. So now, even though like, I'm like, dad, I want you there. Like I want you, I still want you there. I still want you in my life. I want us to be normal. I want us to have normal conversations. I want us to still have a bond, even if it's not the same bond yeah. that we had when we were younger. Um, But it's different. But it's it's like, harder. Yeah. It's a little hard to like be like, oh, to just see past yeah. the things when he sometimes still has certain viewpoints that it's like, why? Like, yeah. why? Por qué? Pero that's what makes it hard now. I'm like, I just want to be really close to my family. And recently I had been talking about how I th I'm thinking of moving out, but I want to be with my family. Yeah. And but in, in that I'm very stuck because yeah. I feel like. I, I just want to appreciate them more. I want to have them around me. I want to be able to help them. I want to be able to do things for them. Social media gave me a lot of opportunities to do things for them as well that I'm doing right now. And I, I really love that. It makes me feel really good. But that little side of him, it makes it hard. It does. Y pues, en eso pues, I'm, we're still growing yeah. up. We're, we're still learning. But I feel like after going through everything that I went through, through that very bad mental state, I feel like now growing out of it, I kind of know where to put yeah. my head to not fall back into that. Y yo pienso que es lo más normal because, you know, I've always have talked about on, you know, the podcast and just in general on my videos, de que pues yo también, yo, la re, yo no tengo una bonita relación con mi papá. Even to this day, I want to say, I feel like now our relationship is kind of like just there. But like as a child, yo llegué hasta decir que lo odiaba. Yo llegué, like just being so angry at him because I always felt like out of all my siblings, él me quería menos a mí. And I always kind of took it personal because because of my sexual orientation or whatever the hell, I would take things personal that he would do. Y ya de adulto, yo pienso que yo digo, ¿sabes qué? Mi papá, sea lo que sea, like, he was always a provider. Nunca me faltó ni techo, ni comida, ni nada. Él puede ser la manera que él puede ser. And I'm not going to, like, make that kind of affect who I want to be as a person. Yo pienso que ya de adulto lo perdoné. And I was like, you know what? Aunque todavía me duelan las cosas que me hiciste or how you made me feel, I'm not going to keep holding on to that grudge because al fin del día, el único que se, la única persona que se lastima es uno. Por you know eso. what I mean? And I've gotten to the point como tú, where I've like, you know what? Yo voy a aceptar a mi papá como él sea. Y si él no quiere cambiar his way of thinking or just the way he is, on him. Yo como persona puedo ser, you know, not mejor, but just kind of, you know, 
be más, you know, just kind of be more, I, I would want to say, like, yo ya de adulto, I'm kind of more like, si él va a pensar así, que lo piense, yo no. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm not going to let his way of thinking kind of, you know, make me think a certain way. Hablamos un poquito, you know, that during that time, cuando estabas pasando toda that rocky moment with, you know, your dad, you went through depression, you went through anxiety, you were also doing things, you know, that you weren't supposed to be doing. You were becoming rebellious. You weren't, like, listening to your parents. At that time, did, you know, the depression or anxiety ever get to a place that was really low or did it ever have you doing things que a lo mejor tú a tu that you shouldn't have been doing? Yes, um, I've actually, I've made a lot of story times on TikToks about a lot of things that I've been through, but one thing that I haven't talked about on TikTok is how I started smoking at 14 years old. Mm. It was very young, very young, um, and it's not something that I'm proud of, and it's something that I kind of, I feel like kids use nowadays yeah. to become numb to their feelings, to not care, to just, like, pass the day, Yeah, and that's, That's what I did, and it was it was very bad though, because it was like to a point where I was smoking every period, like at school. At school. How did it even start? Like, how did you even have the accessibility to the weed? I didn't even know what weed was, like that. Like, I barely knew the the word yeah. weed. Like, I just heard a couple kids say weed, and it was the time where like these pens were becoming very popular. Wax pens were becoming very mm -hmm. popular in high school, and I was at a point where. Not only was I already feeling sad because of all these arguments and all these negative things happening with my dad, um, I was also, I had, this was a point where I had, I had met my boyfriend, my first boyfriend at the time. And I was at a point that day I remember, I remember the first day I ever took my first hit. I felt really bad. Like, and it was a feeling that I had never felt before. I, could, I couldn't understand why I felt so down as a 14 year old i felt like no point to life at that point because i was like it's already bad here my life is already bad there it's already bad there que valga ver yeah. <laughs> oh, que chingue su madre like, todo no no you I'm can so cuss sorry, amiga tú like... estamos en noche de pendejadas tú di la pendejada que quieras <laughs> my bad i'm gonna be like a la verga no i'm just kidding that day at school i was so down i didn't understand why i couldn't process my emotions i was in class and The, this guy neck that sat next to me, um, he he saw that I was like, así, aguitada, and we would yeah. talk, you know, we would talk. And like, he kind of just was like, you want to hit this? I guess like to like, pa que se, yeah, you know, because yeah. he knew already, He's obviously like, he did you'll it. feel better. He was like, yeah. yeah. In, pues no me dijo, you'll feel better, así. I feel like that's what, because my dad was like, te dicen que te vas a sentir mejor si pruebas eso y no es cierto. But no, he didn't tell me that. Like, it was, it was not like that. It was just like, you want to hit this? And pues, Um, I got it. I took it to the restroom by myself. He didn't even tell me how to hit it. Yeah. Like, he didn't even show me how to hit it. Yo nomás lo hice um, en el baño, tosí unas cuantas veces. I was on my way back to class. Bitch, everything was spinning. Everything was, like, I could, I could, I don't know how I made it to the class. I don't know how I didn't open the wrong class no door. No one noticed or no nothing? No one noticed. The teacher <gasps> didn't notice. This was my first time, obviously. I didn't realize how red my eyes got when I get, um, when I, I smoked. I, my eyes were so freaking red. It, I was going to my next period and I was tweaking. Like, I was like, no, I, I, I was having like a panic attack-ish. I didn't want to do anything. I kind of like wanted to keep my head down. I didn't want to look at the teacher. Yeah, I was yeah. like, the teacher's gonna like look at me. She's gonna see You're my paranoid. eyes red. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happens to you like kind of like everyone's first time. You get very paranoid. And that, that was my first time. Um, I had this girl take care of me. I was like, Um, this girl who I would talk to in my class, I was like, can you please make sure the teacher doesn't see me? Like, don't don't let her see me. And she was like, you'll be okay. You'll be. Looking back at that girl, that's embarrassing. I'm like, that's not very demure yeah, yeah. of you. Like, <laughs> That's not very cutesy. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, very yeah. Cutesy. And so that was my first time. And after that, I kind of like started buying my own. I started buying my own because in school they would sell. It was like- Like the kids? <gasps> ¿Y cómo lo conseguían like, ellos? Like maybe their parents or someone? They would buy, well, Quién sabe, they would always say that was fake stuff, no fake stuff. You just never knew if yeah, it was yeah, something yeah. fake or not. Pero yo como una niña así bien gullible, I just took it, like, I, and from anyone. Yeah, yeah. And it was, like, obviously, like, why are you, like, buying off just anyone? You don't know if it's fake. You don't know if it's um, laced or something. I just started buying them, and it got to a really bad point where I was, like, using it all the time just to numb away my feelings. And that's why I feel like I never actually got to process anything emotionally. Yeah. I never got to actually, like, see things like clearly yeah, try yeah. to think a little bit better because the weed was just numbing my my thoughts away. Yeah. It was just numbing my feelings away. So 
it, it was just like always like that. Like I was always faded in class. And I, when I realized, obviously my eyes were always red, I always had eye drops. So yeah. it was like, no one noticed. I got very used to the feeling of smoking. So it's like, I can, I can smoke and it's not nothing unusual yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. It's like, I'm it became a normal, the normal. person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I was doing everything high all the time. And I was a teenager. Yeah, like yeah. I was in high school. Like my brain was developing. My brain is still you developing. You were killing all I'm the like fucking <laughs> brain cells that were trying to grow. That's crazy. Yeah. Did it ever get to the point on the la mejor en la escuela or your parents kind of te cacharon con la pen and they're like, ¿Qué es esto, Miriam? Yes. So that comes back to, um, I've never told my story either on like how the first time I ever got caught. Um, that comes back to my dad being very strict with my sister. He was always trying to find something to get her in trouble for. So he would look at my phone too. Yeah. He would look at her phone and he would look at my phone because apparently like her business was on my phone. Yeah, I don't know yeah. why it would be, but he found my business, not hers. He found me, he found me, he found a video of me. Hitting um, the pen. Hitting the pen yeah. <gasps> and actually, <laughs> I know my brother still remembers this. Um, the first time I had gotten caught, my dad had showed the phone to my brother I think, and I think um, he asked him, like, what is this? And my brother was like, oh, she's smoking. And yeah. I was like, why are you snitching me out? Because my dad didn't realize what it was. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he was looking at the video. He's like, like, what? Like, what is what she, is she doing? hitting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was always the good girl. Like I yeah, said, yeah. my parents, I was not their good girl anymore. I was not their good, innocent girl anymore. Because he went to go look at things for my sister. To me, like, I, they found something um, from me instead. I was not their good, innocent girl no more. I was like, you know, I was... I, they've, that's when they had a different viewpoint on me, you know, which understandable. How was that moment for you? Obviamente, your dad's going through your phone. He sees this video. Se te cae el pinche corazón por el culo. What did you say? What was your reaction? Cuéntanos eso. If I thought, like I think now, I would feel guilty and I would yeah. feel bad. But back then, because I had all this anger, all this grudge hold, hold, like held towards him, I was like, well, you're not perfect you're not this and you're not that and like you've done this and you've done that to me why do i have to respect you this much and and do something that you want me to do or like that or stop doing something that Les you don't want me to la do tortilla. see i didn't know how to like explain yeah, yeah. express myself i didn't know how to um tell them things when i finally was able to tell them that hey like i it's because they call me multiple times they call me like me aprendías? <laughs> no aprendía. <gasps> No aprendía yo. You were all fiending for the pen. I was. It was bad. Like I'm like me now. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> so they called me multiple times. And when I finally got to a point where I was like, okay, let me try to explain to them also why I yeah. why like I feel like like I just want to do this and why it's helping me. Because at the time yeah. I was like, this is helping me. This is helping my anxiety. This is helping me because I don't feel it. Yeah. But you don't feel it for what, an hour? But because I was always hitting it all yeah. the fucking time, I never felt it. But like you don't feel it for a little bit and then what you still have to go back to reality you still have to process those emotions you still have to think about the, the issues you still have to think about your problems there's no way out of it the, the way out of it is to deal with it and yeah. smoke if you're in a good headspace and you're not like you know así entonces when I finally got to a point where I felt like I wanted to talk to them and express the way that I felt the way that I felt this sad I kind of knew because they're es on el rancho yeah, no, yeah. no creen en la depresión es droga yeah, yeah, is that what they no were telling you? No creen en la depresión, no creen en lo que tú sientes, en lo que tú piensas. I feel like, in a way, they thought that my emotions were cringe. Yeah. <laughs> like, this girl is cringe, what is she saying? But I tried to explain to them that I felt alone, that I felt, like, alone, because I felt like my dad was so different, yeah, that yeah, our yeah. family was so different, our, our household was toxic, our household was, like, somewhere where I didn't even feel, yeah. like, good anymore, safe. When it got to that point, no me, entien, no me entendieron. Pensaron que era pura rebeldía, pensaron que era nomás, que era excusa. Ma, mi papá siempre ha dicho eso y siempre lo va a decir, hasta ahorita lo va a decir. Yeah. Es excusa, el que quiere hacer lo que hace es porque quiere y no por otra cosa. And in a way, he's not yeah. wrong because you could choose to do something else. But when you're a kid and you're a teenager and you're not getting even the help to process your emotions yourself or you have those parents who don't know how to emotionally be there for you because they don't believe in these things, who, what yeah. are you gonna do? Who are you going, who are you going to and how are you gonna express your emotions? How are you gonna process your emotions? How are you gonna like think of it differently if like who's gonna tell you, you know? So I feel like that was like, like I understood their part, but 
they also didn't understand me, understand you, know? you. Yeah. you know, obviamente nos cuentas de que tú empezaste a fumar a los 14 años which it is a very young age. I'm not going to sit down here and be like, ah, yo no hago eso porque yo ya de adulto lo hago. And I feel like it does become almost like an addiction, right? Especially las lapiceras, amigas. Like, it is so easy to just be like, yeah. that it really does become an addiction que a veces is really hard to, like, leave. Did you ever feel like it was becoming a thing that you couldn't stop doing even if you wanted to stop it? No, yeah. Well, at first I didn't want to, like, Oh, all through high school, I did not want to stop. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is good. Like, no me importa. I was like, I was like literally like a fan of yeah. marijuana. I was like, y pues nunca pude ser tanto de like the actual bud. It yeah, was yeah, always yeah. mostly wax because that was the most convenient because así no me, no me encontraba. Yeah, you know, yeah, they yeah. didn't smell it. They didn't catch on. So it was the most easiest thing to do. And I would praise that shit like it was everything. And no, that's not, that's just not how you should do because it's a bad habit. And it, it gets to a point yeah, where even though you're like, maybe I should stop, you, you're you like, but I can just take a hit. Yeah. Like, or I'll stop tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow I'll comes. Stop tomorrow. Take a hit tomorrow. It really is like a hard thing to do. You know, obviously, yo te gano con seis años. And although that's not like a crazy difference, I feel like it kind of, especially with the evolution of like how accessible weed has become. Mm -hmm. Yo me acuerdo when I was in high school or middle school, I think like wax pens were barely coming out. Like they mm -hmm. weren't as popular. And at school, like even my brother lo cacharon muchas veces, you know, in high school fumando actual weed, like the flower. Y me acuerdo que lo cachamos muchas veces con su manzanita y todo. So, because I would see how my parents would react, yo de chamaquito, I was like, no, yo nunca le voy a poner a eso. It wasn't until maybe when I turned maybe, I think I tried my first hit, like when I turned 21. Which was around the same time where I started drinking. Porque yo por muchos años, yo tenía el trauma de que no voy a tomar, no voy a tomar. My dad, it's for good, all though. his life, he was an alcoholic. So yo pienso que yo no quería porque decía, no, yo no le voy a seguir los pasos a mi papá. Yo quiero ser mejor. Whatever the case is. But I feel like now as an adult, it is a very, you know, it is an addiction que siento como que no se platica mucho about. And I feel like, you know, those pens have become so accessible because a couple years ago, maybe like two years ago, me and my boyfriend were driving by our school, by our old high school, and literally the kids, as they're walking to school at seven o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's like a wax pen or if it's like a vape pen. That was but Natalie Nunn, fumando la pinche wax pen. But it's so crazy how accessible it is. Do you feel like, you know, smoking it so young, do you feel like that affected you in any way? Maybe like, you know, the way you were thinking at the time, or do you feel like it also kind of blinded your feelings and you're like, you know what, me vale verga lo que la gente piense. I don't care, I'm gonna be this way, but it was also because it was also the we talking. Yes, that's why I did want to talk about it because I haven't talked a lot about, I haven't talked a lot about it on my TikTok because um, I feel like when you're young, you don't realize what it's yeah. going to do to you because you're still, you're still like coming into the world and kind of seeing how things are. You're, you're kind of like seeing how you want to be as a person and everything. And I feel like um, for me, it didn't let me not only like process my emotions, but like if I wouldn't have used that as an escape or, or use that as an, a distraction, yeah. I feel like I, I would have maybe thought things clearer like yeah. sooner, sooner than young, sooner than younger. I mean, sooner than, than later, than la sooner than, <laughs> sooner than later. I feel like I maybe would have gotten the mindset that I have now yeah. a little bit younger if I had just like tried to see things without the, num like, you know, without the feeling smoking. that yeah, numbness. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I feel, is that why you said that? Is that why you were surprised when I said I bought it like from school? Yeah, because went, I'm like, cause that didn't happen back then. I mean, they used to sell like, I mean, in high school, siempre se ha vendido like the actual bud, mm -hmm. but like I never saw people ever selling pens. Maybe I was just not kicking it with those type of people. No me ofrecían, no, they but did it wasn't like, like a normal thing. Yeah, they did become like more of a thing back then. And I feel like that's what makes it worse because like you said, it's more accessible. It's easier to hide. It's just... It's easier, it's, it's easier to take anywhere and it's yeah. easier to just be like, let me hit it right yeah. now because it's already there. You don't have to roll. You don't have to like grind. You don't have to do anything. Um, so yeah, I feel like, like if you're a teenager and you're watching this and you're using weed as an escape or to like get away from it and you know it and you don't want to accept it sometimes. Yeah. You, you know that, you know why are you doing it and you know what the reality is and you don't want to accept it because you just, yeah. just want to like put it aside. 
it's not gonna help your issues. It's not gonna help you. It's not gonna help you grow. It's not gonna benefit you. It's not gonna um, change your life. It's not gonna change the way anyone around you is acting. What has to change is yeah. you. Mm -hmm. What has to change is you, and I had to change myself. Uh, yeah, a veces te tienes que dar la oportunidad to feel whatever the hell you gotta feel because like I was saying, me as an adult, that's when I kind of started getting into it and it became like a once, uh, two times a week and it slowly became something that I was doing more regularly that I kind of didn't realize how much I was smoking and it was becoming like the new norm. Que a veces, como estamos platicando, a veces me pasaban cosas, I've been going through things and like that kind of numbs like your feelings that kind of just makes you not feel what you gotta feel pero a veces es muy importante sentir lo que tienes que sentir because when you feel things you guys and you're in a mind space where you can actually feel and navigate your feelings like vas a salir más pronto of that like agujero where you feel stuck in than if you were to just be like smoking your weed to like make the problems go away because it doesn't make your problems go away it kind of stalls your problems pero llega un momento aunque hasta fumando tu pinche lapicera ningún pinche problema se te va a ir because they're just it's going to pile up y va a llegar un punto donde los tienes que afrentar, you know? So it's great that you as an adult, you're like, you know what? Yo si fumo ya no lo voy a usar para, you know, to cover yeah. like or conceal whatever I'm feeling. Yeah, because like I won't use it as a way to like get over mm -hmm. things or to put things aside. No, I want to face the things. I want to go through them because that's what that's what life is everybody goes through things there's people who go through worse things than others and that's just how life is some yeah. people have it worse others don't but everyone goes through things everyone goes through something negative and it's just not a way to like it's not a way yeah. to process it it's not a way to move on what you have to do is change in yourself i feel like the change in yeah. yourself is the number one thing and in your mindset is the number one thing do you feel like since you say that you do it more regularly, do you feel like it affects you in the way you work? Mm hmm It does, right? I feel like, you know what? It got to the point where I was doing it too often to where it was kind of yeah. almost fogging up my brain. It was almost kind of like not letting me think straight. And I will not lie, you guys. Maybe like last year, um, I literally had a moment where I was like, you know what? I'm doing this too much to where it's kind of not even allowing me to do what I got to do on the regular basis or it was kind of interfering with my work. So it got to the point where I was like, no. Esto ya no, this is affecting me on the daily. I gotta stop it. And I'm not gonna lie, you guys, a veces sí. No, a veces. I still do smoke. But I feel like now I'm trying to be more considerate and yes. be like, you know what? You can't use that to cope. I feel like it's when you overdo it yeah. and when you're doing it way too much, that's when it doesn't allow you to kind of move forward. Yeah. To grow. It makes that's you feel it, stuck. Yeah. It, it really does. does. It really does. And I think it's something that is... You know, I feel like a lot of people, and I'm talking about this, you guys, because I feel like I never really have I talked. I don't, talk I don't I don't like talking about like stuff like this because I also don't want people to like see me and be like, oh, pues yo también. Yeah. Si Alan fuma, si Miriam fuma a los 14, pues yo a los 13 también. But it's more <laughs> of like, you know, raise awareness. I have always said, um, you know, gracias a Dios, Yo esperé a tomar y a fumar until I was 21, until I felt like I was actually developed enough. But I've always said, if you're a child, if you're under, you know, 21 watching this amiga, va a llegar un punto en tu vida where you're old enough to experience everything you gotta experience y todo a su tiempo. Si están viendo esto ahorita, amigas, y si tú estás en las mismas, si estás súper joven, por favor, Tomen esto como your sign to stop doing that. Take this as your sign to start allowing yourself to feel what you gotta feel because como les digo, los problemas no se van. If anything, se les multiplican porque pues you guys are just stalling on them y les va a llegar, y va a llegar un momento donde les va a pegar duro y no van a saber ni qué hacer. Today's episode is brought to you by Alma. Alma believes that therapy is more impactful when you feel heard and understood. That's why they help people find a therapist who really gets them. The right someone to talk to, not just anyone. Alma can help you find a therapist who gets you. When you browse the directory, you can filter by what you want to focus on, for example, anxiety, relationship, or big life transitions, as well as any preference around gender, sexuality, faith, 
and more. Alma can help you find a therapist who takes your insurance. People who find in-network care through Alma save an average of 77% on the cost of therapy. It's easy to get started with Alma. Browse the directory without creating an account or sharing payment information. You can book a free consultation call with any therapist you're interested in seeing. These 15 minute calls give you a chance to see if they're a good fit for you so you can find someone you really click with. Even though I'm currently not in therapy, I know the importance of having someone in my life who truly understands where I'm coming from. For those of you guys that follow me, obviamente ustedes saben that the past month and a half has been one of the hardest months of my life and going through everything I've been through this past month with my grandpa's passing, I wish I could have been in therapy prior and during the process to really help me kind of navigate these feelings of grief y todo lo que he estado sintiendo este último mes, amigas, pero no es muy tarde to join therapy. If you've been considering finding a licensed professional to help you work through your own life challenges, give Alma a try. Alma can help you find the right therapist for you, not just anyone. Visit helloalma.com slash Alan to get started and schedule a free consultation today. That's helloalma.com slash Alan. Quiero platicar algo, you know, durante este tiempo, you know, you were going through rebeldía, you were going through this problem que nos estabas contando ahorita, pero también había visto un TikTok tuyo porque tú cuentas todos tus chismes en tu TikTok. Nos estabas contando en un TikTok que durante ese tiempo también le dejases de hablar a tu hermana por un año. Sí. Cuéntanos un poquito de eso. ¿Qué causó esa distancia? What made you guys be like, you know, what? Ya no te quiero hablar, hermana. Me hiciste esto, esto, otro. Cuéntanos todo ese chisme. For backstory, like I said, me and my sister, we got along like we should have, but we did like bump heads. We weren't the same people. We had different point of views. And we would both always say this. It was like I was the older sister and she was the younger sister because it was always me advising her. It was always like, you know, me like yeah. um, letting her know like, hey, like maybe you shouldn't. And she would help me out a lot too, you know, she, she would. But um, I feel like... We were always like, why does it seem like, oh, you're the like you're the bigger sister? Yeah. This was very petty. The reason why we stopped talking, I feel like now, was very petty. Yeah. Cause it was over boys. So my sister was talking to a guy at the time and I had opinions on every guy that she talked to because you could you know, as a sister, yeah. you automatically you're like, Come on girl. now. Yeah, like yeah. About this one I didn't really think much. I was like, Okay, well, you know, do your thing, girl. And so one time we went on a date. We went on a double date ish, me and my boyfriend at the time and her and the guy she was talking to because we had very strict parents. This was when my dad was starting to let us go out more. Yeah. She was driving at the time. He let us go out to this dinner and it was supposed to be like us together, but we were going on a double date. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we had picked up my ex. Um, we had picked him up to take him with us. But when we were going back, my dad was like calling us, blowing our phone up. So we had to leave. Like we were scared to death. Yeah. So we, we couldn't take him back. So then the guy she was talking to offered to take him back. He, I guess on the car ride home, um, they had some conversations. They knew each other from like mutual friends. And the guy she was talking to ended up telling her some stuff about my ex at the time. And at the time, me and my ex were already like toxic. We were already going through all these things. We were already um, arguing all the time. It was not the best time in our relationship at all. And my sister found out that me and him were arguing one day. She could automate, she always knew when something was wrong and she always knew that it was him. I was telling her about what was going on and she was like, well, I didn't want to tell you this, but um, the, the guy that I was talking to, he told me this and that, that he said this and he said that. Um, eran cosas like outrageous. Yeah. It was like, he literally told her that he owns guns and he roofies girls at parties. He wanted to go with other girls after we left you guys. Yeah. It was things like that. And I was like, okay, the left, the leave you for girls. Okay, any guy, so that that's like believable. But the whole like roofy girls at parties when I talk to this guy every single day and that was outrageous. I was like, okay, well then I don't believe that. I ended up having this conversation with my ex and um, I obviously, I always ended up believing him, but I believed him and um, I kind of, I kind of grew like animosity towards the guy she was talking to. I was like, why is he gonna make that up just to separate us, you know? Like, um, so I told Kim, I was like, Kim is my sister. I was like, why is your man like this? And why is he just muscle? Cause also he had gotten into like our family business. Like, like he would talk about like my dad and stuff. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. I was like, what the, you know, like this is not whatever. But like, she kept talking to him. So I was like, okay, whatever. Comes Valentine's and I was filming a little TikTok. Um, 
doing a little Valentine's Day look in my room. And then her and my dad come in, they're talking, discussing, because she's 18 at the time, so he's like deciding to let her go out with the guy for the first time. Thinking about my dad was like, he kind of little by little started letting us do things, but he is a nagger. Like he'll let no. you know what he doesn't want. And even if it's like nonsense, like why wouldn't, like why won't you let me do this? Like. Why, why not? You would just, like, take it because yeah. you're like, pues nos está dejando salir, aunque sea. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'll still nag at us. Like, he'll, he, he'll still nag. So he was, like, nagging at her for, um, he was like, okay, well, you can go out with this guy, but don't be buying him a gift. You're not dating him yet. You're, well, she was yeah, advising yeah, yeah. her. But in the way that my dad does it, it's not even, like, advice. It's, it's like, me like, estás chingando. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> like, it's not like, mija, no seas mensa, no le compres. No te quiero ver que le estés comprando ni más. Like, it's like, it's more yes. the tone in the way, right? Yes. Uh -huh. hay, hay forma de hablar, ¿me entiendes? Mm -hmm. Y él, mi papá no tiene forma para hablar. Entonces, he was like, y apa, no le andes comprando regalo. Eh, no son novios, no es nada tuyo, no le tienes que comprar nada. Y aparte, se me hace muy chismoso ese muchacho. Entonces, you know, me with my animosity towards him I turned around I was like yeah even you know that girl um so I, my little petty comment yeah, yeah, yeah. and I turn around to keep doing my makeup and then she like she's in the background and she t she says at least he doesn't smoke like your boyfriend and I was like, <gasps> like why though yeah oh shit uh -huh. and like the thing is like it was a couple years that we had been together already yeah, I, yeah. I believe she knew how our relationship came to be. She knew how I felt about him. She knew who I was as a person. She knew that I, like, we were young and yeah. I was a little girl, but that relationship wasn't just anything to me. Yeah, like, yeah. it was literally everything to me. And so for her to, like, just, like, I obviously didn't want yeah. my dad to know that of him because obviously my dad would not accept my ex smoking, obviously, because I had already been caught. He's yeah, yeah. he not going to want gonna something. He's going to think, no, pues, de ahí empezó eso. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And my sister knew all of this stuff. I just didn't understand why she, like, I know my comment was petty, but it was, like, agreeing to yeah, my yeah, dad, yeah. you know? And I feel like it wasn't to the point to where she had to, like, spit that out. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I understand her point of view now. And so I was like, what the? Like, I played it off. I was like, Dad, she's literally lying. It was that guy that told her all this stuff about yeah. him. And he and he's, like, trying to make my ex look like Because because of what he already done, I was like, I'm going to use that to tell my dad that it's a lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't a lie. Like, my ex also did smoke. I was like, no, like, she's lying because he told her all this stuff, so he's be she's believing him. And my dad believed me. Like, my dad believed my ex. So then I, w I, to I turned around to my sister. I was like, it was her birthday in two days. Her birth It was February 14th. Her birthday's in the, sec the 16th. The 16th, huh? Yeah, and so I was like, you can, you can forget about me doing your makeup and you can forget about me going to your birthday dinner. <laughs> Like when You're I like, tell you, like, que yeah, 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 yeah. like, I feel like my ex was a big reason why I took a lot of things very yeah. personally. Like he kind of taught me to like, don't let no one like, yeah. like, you know, disrespect your like, or like hurt you in certain ways. So when I felt like this was such like a betrayal for my sister, I was like, no, like I'm not going to your birthday dinner. To me, it was a principle behind yeah. it that she knew how this, how much he meant to me. And she did that. So I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing this. And so she ended up canceling her dinner. ¿Por qué no ibas a ir tú? I think so. I think it was, she says that it was because I wasn't going to go and she didn't have, like, no one to go with except for one friend, which, you know, she could have gone yeah. with, her, with her one friend. She canceled her birthday dinner, and my it was going to be me and my cousins, my two cousins and her. And so one of my cousins had called off to go to the dinner. When I said I didn't want to go, I she canceled it, and my cousin was like, well, I literally asked for my day off. Like, can I please... Or can we, like, go do Kick something? Kick it or do something. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I yeah. called for my day off for nothing. So I was like, yeah, okay, what do you want to do? And so, so she was like, lo voy a ir sushi. And so my sister found out about this. And in that moment, I guess, like, that, like, they were, she was like, what? They're going to go out with me Without on my me. birthday, yeah, 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 like, yeah. literally on my birthday. And it's very understandable, like, going out with someone It just on looks their sneaky. Birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, if you guys what? were like, you know what? We're not going to go to your birthday celebration, but we're going to celebrate ourselves. Literally. Right. But when you look at it from my yeah. point of view, it was like she had canceled yeah. her birthday dinner. I I already said I wasn't going to go to her dinner. My cousin was still going to go to her dinner. She had canceled yeah. it. So then my cousin wasn't going to let her day go to waste. It was more know? like of a communication or yeah. not knowing how things actually played out. Yeah. yeah. Whenever she found that out, I guess she was with my dad. And she says that she felt really now. She says that she she felt really frustrated and she felt like so hurt by that. She snitched me out on everything. She um, she told my dad 
every little secret that she knew about me. <gasps> she told him that I would, instead of going to the gym, go and see my ex, be with him in my dad's car because that was a really big thing to my dad. Like, don't bring no guy in my cars. Yeah. Because they gave me the freedom at least to start going to the gym at that time because I wasn't able to before either. With that little freedom, like, obviously that was gone yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if she snitched me out. So she snitched me out that I would use his car to go see my ex, that I was going with him instead of the gym sometimes. And she snitched me out that I, that I still smoke. And she told them where I kept everything. She gave them everything. And then she tricked me. Well, kind of. I would say it's tricking because she told me um, like a day before her birthday, she was like, do my makeup, look at it as business, and that's it. So I was like, okay. So my cousin, she ended up putting her birthday dinner back on. My cousin was like, just go, Miriam. Like, I, I, I kind of don't want to go. Yeah. Like, she was going with her other friend, and my cousin didn't know her other friend. So she was like, Miriam, like, just go so we can all go. Um, and so I was like, you know what? Like, fine, I'll go. And my parents were telling me to go too, like, just go celebrate her birthday. Y pues, Aquí viene el día que le estoy haciendo su maquillaje, le hice su maquillaje bien bonito, por cierto, por cierto, y antes de irnos mi mamá me dice, "Tengo que hablar contigo." And I'm like, "Okay." I'm like, "¿De qué?" <laughs> and she was like, "Hablamos cuando regresamos." My sister knew what she wanted yeah. to talk to me about, but she stayed quiet in that moment. She she like, didn't, didn't even like warn así, you. Yeah, yeah, como yeah. si nada. And she knew that I was going to her birthday dinner already too. I went to her birthday dinner. I was very normal with her. I Talk, I spoke to her normally, even though I was still mad as fuck that um, she had snitched my my man out at the time. I go to her birthday dinner. We're, we're having a good time. She's talking to me like nothing. Like, she doesn't know that anything is going to go down. We get home, and my parents are waiting for me. My dad, entro a la casa, y mi papá me, me dice, dame tu bolsa. A ver, ¿qué tengo en la bolsa? I had nothing in my bag, and so... I'm like, what? Like, I was so confused because we were good for a while. I was like, I hadn't been gone in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? Like, what's going on? Like, I don't have anything. Like, what are you talking about? And so, trying to play it off. He, one thing about my dad is, if, like, if he, él odia, si le haces, si le odia mientes. si le miras la cara. Es un, algo que dice el que no le gusta que le miren la cara. So I was like trying to lie it off or trying to play it off. So he got more mad because I was like trying to play it off. Then comes my mom down the hall with all the stuff in her hand because my sister had like told him where I kept everything. And then comes my sister in the door. I had like, when my mom came out with everything, I kind of realized, I was like, damn, yeah. she really told him like, wow. Like she told him everything. She comes in the door and I was like, you really told them about this? Like, I was like, why would you do this? Like, you know how I am, like, why would, why would you snitch me out on this? And so she came in the door, she rolled her eyes, and she says she rolled her eyes because my, because she didn't want to deal with my dad arguing and stuff. But I feel like she, in the moment I was like, damn, you're really gonna roll your eyes when you just did this yeah. to me? I'm like, like you're you the one sorry. who- sorry, yeah, 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 I was like, you're rolling your eyes, I should be rolling my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and I follow her to the room, cause I'm like, I'm like really, I'm really mad because to me on the deeper level that my sister knows me, I'm like, why? Like when she knew like all the things, like yeah. she would watch me cry at night. She would watch me stay up at night overthinking, crying about all these things. And she knew that I was trying, like even though I was like, I had yeah. this like bad habit with smoking, she knew that I was trying. I, I was trying to like be a little bit happier. And like whenever it was issues with my dad, it makes it 10 times harder to yeah. be better, you know? So I was kind of like, why would she do this? It, it really hurt me. And then when I went to the room and like kind of find out that she literally tells her all my intimacy with my boyfriend, like she yeah. she basically also let him know that I was like sexually intimate with him. It was like, why? Like, why yeah. do you have to let them know all, all of the that? shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't that big of a deal, my little comment that I made earlier for yeah. you to really snitch me out completely. The way I was taking it, I was like, you're really trying to paint me as a person that I'm not to my parents. You want them to look at me in a way that I'm not. It may make them look yeah. at me like I'm such a bad kid. It's not that I'm a bad kid. You know, I was like going through all these things, didn't know how to process them. It, it kind of made me feel like when you know how I am and you know my character and we spend all the time together because we literally live together, you see me crying at night, you see me having these anxiety attacks, you see me, um, you see me going through all these personal things and you're still gonna like, want to make it worse yeah. you know because obviously she knew it's going to get worse if my parents were like knowing about all these things we're in the room at this point and i'm i'm like damn like you really want to do all this like I, I had so many things that i could she was married at the time and my dad didn't know i was keeping yeah 
I didn't even say it about, nothing about that in that moment either. She had apparently snitched herself out so that I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm, she's like, te voy a ganar, Miriam, antes de que tú digas el chisme. That's crazy. Did you guys get into like a fight there and then, like a physical fight? Yeah, or, like, so <gasps> that's the first time I actually ever put hands on anyone. Like I got in a fight because I've been at school where I almost um, got jumped because I got in between a fight and I almost got jumped for yeah. like get, getting in between that. And so... But I, it wasn't, that fight never actually happened. So this was the closest that I had, like, been to actually fighting. Like, I actually swung at her. I actually busted her lip. I <gasps> broke her nail. Um, and, like, I I was furious. Like, that's the that's the worst. That, like, yeah. I think I've never seen myself more mad or I've never felt more anger. I think because of, in the moment, I was like, wow, like, yeah. you're really doing all that. I think it also, like you said, it's also the principle. I feel like because you knew she ratted you out, not really to help your situation, it was more, like, malicious. Yes. Like, yo pienso que fuera diferente, like, if her as an older sister, she was like, you know what, my sister's going through it. Maybe I should tell my parents so they can help her out, like, so we can all help her out as a family. But it wasn't the case. It was more like, no, you know what? I'm going to ruin shit for her. I'm doing this more with, like, a malicious intent. And that's where it hurt you as a sister. You're like, no mames, güey. Aquí te estoy diciendo lo bueno, lo malo que me pasa. Y tú aquí andas diciéndole todos mis pedos a mis papás. What was that like you know obviamente se pelean you guys stopped talking were you guys still living in the same household while you guys stopped talking if so what was that like se miraban no se hablaban that night we had to sleep separated because I tried swinging at her at first y mi papá se metió en medio entonces no pude yeah. él se se, se se fue del cuarto or he was like leaving the room and I was like fuck no this I oh matter of fact I actually not that I I didn't swing at her at first when my dad was leaving I was like okay well this is my chance. I got my shoebox and threw it at her with my shoes in it. <laughs> well, they were, they were heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my shoebox, I threw it at her, and then I started swinging at her. I started going at it, and then we had to sleep in separate rooms that night. And then after that, we still kept sharing a room, but we wouldn't, we shared a bed. We would literally sleep on the same bed, and we didn't say a word to each other for months. I think it was like five months that we taught that we were living together in the same room without talking to each other and in those times she really thought that i did like all these things because i was yeah. like mad at her uh, I, she says that she wasn't mad at me n the whole time that she knew that i was mad at her so she didn't talk to me yeah. and so in those times that she thought i was mad at her she thought that i would like do these things like dijo que un día se encontró la cobija con no sé qué cagada o no sé qué en la cobija and she thought it was me she went and snitched me out and she went and told my dad that like i was doing this stuff i'm like i'm literally not doing anything because yeah. i've always been the type of person that i i won't get back at you yeah. like I like well, karma I do her. its thing, yeah. I fought her, but that was, I guess that was, like, my little get back. But, like, I'm not going to, like, why am I going to disturb you? Why am I going to uh. do this? Why am I going to, like, lie on you? Why am I going to, like, try to do the same to you? Or I think even then, I don't know, I probably did snitch her out because I was so pissed um, once or twice about something. But, you know, no, no, no le quería hacer mal así. Entonces, I was like, why would I do that? Like, karma will get you. I'm not, I don't have to put nothing on your blanket, yeah, yeah. you know, to get my revenge. And so that was our situation for like five months. She would think that I was like doing these things, like taking her things, messing up her things. And we, but we wouldn't say a word to each other. Like one single word. If it, it was her telling my dad and he would tell me. And, Como messenger. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, así. Y luego como cinco meses pasaron and she moved out and actually like that whole situation with my sister genuinely did hurt me to a point where I, I was going to the gym already and I had some progress but obviously after all of that happened my parents didn't let me go to the gym yeah. anymore and it really messed me up so bad that like I feel like this was a betrayal that I felt like a, f a friend had never betrayed me yeah. that way you know like it kind of felt like that and it, I lost so much weight like I think that was like the the I got so skinny. I think since I started working out, I had not gotten that skinny. Yeah, like yeah. I was so skinny. And so I like had to like, yeah, I had to like work myself all over again. Yeah. Like even though I was already going through things, it kind of like put me in a worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And y luego, pues, I had to like get out of that too. Yeah, yeah You yeah. know, get out of like the, the feeling of my sister betraying me and the feeling of like, I didn't have the sister I thought I yeah. had, you know? Even though we didn't have the closest bond like I thought we would when we first met each other, we still connected in the way that we went through all these yeah. things together. And she even saw everything that we went through. So that also, I was like, you know all of 
how he is so why like yeah you know nos platicas that five months into your guys's fight you know she moves out so i'm sure that kind of made the not talking to each other even easier porque pues ya no tenías que compartir cama mm -hmm. con ella cuéntanos el momento that you guys finally spoke what was that moment like why did you guys start talking to each other cuéntanos todo ese chisme amiga i didn't speak to her at all. I didn't know anything of her. My dad would tell me some things like, oh, está viviendo aquí ahora, está haciendo esto. Um, pero yo no me daba por tanto por saber lo que estaba yeah. haciendo, ¿me entiendes? So I was already doing social media at the time. I was doing good. I was making money, actually. I felt a lot better. I feel like I feel like starting to make money yeah, makes you feel better. me a yeah. lot. It a lot. helps me so much. Like, like, it's not like a, a full fulfillment yeah. of happiness, but it does help a lot. So I was already, like, making money. I had already, like, changed my mindset a lot about things. I had grown a lot as a person already because I had left my ex and everything at the time. Um, so then comes a time where my dad's, like, talking talking about my sister and how she needs a place to stay and how she's thinking about leaving the country. And I was like, why is she going to leave the country? Like, she came here to have a better future when she was 16. Why is she going to leave? Yeah. Like, she, there's nothing for her to do in Mexico. Se iba a regresar a México. Se iba a regresar a México. Or I think she was going to go to another state. No me acuerdo. She was, um, she was going to leave. But it wasn't, it wasn't going to help her in yeah. any way, you know? And if she was already going through something, it wasn't going to help her in any way to, like, leave somewhere that que no conoce. Bueno, if... If she was going to leave to Mexico, obviamente que sí conoce, pero, pero no, no le va a ayudar de nada. Yeah, or yeah. she's not going to be able to do what she really wants to do. You know? I was like, why doesn't she stay with us? Le daba vergüenza. No quería venir a la casa. I told my dad that I would talk to her. So I did talk to her. It wasn't really awkward. Yeah. Because I felt like I had gotten over, I had gotten over the anger. It was more like, okay, well... I see you this way now, now yeah. though, you know, you know, and I don't think like if there was something that I knew I had to keep from everyone, I wouldn't tell you, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I talked to her and I told her I was like, things don't have to be how they are, you yeah. know, like it was the past and it happened and it's fine. I, 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 I didn't really know yeah. how to tell her either. But I was like... Because you're like, it's not fine, <laughs> but I guess it's fine now. But I think it also helped that you had voted the guy. Like, you yeah. were not even with your ex anymore. So you're like, you know what? Why yeah. am I going to keep fighting with my sister if the guy is not in my life? Cierto. But like I said, the principle was yeah, like yeah, the yeah. main thing that really hurt me. So yeah, it was like, he wasn't in my life, so who the fuck cares? But um, I talked to her and I told her, I told her that I didn't have to be like this. I told her that we even if it wasn't the same, that we could still talk and we could be on good terms and and we could help each other out, you know? She ended up, like, moving back in. She ended up kind of, like, opening up a little bit, too, and um, we started talking more little by little. And do I want to say, like, we get along? Like, we, I feel like yeah. we do get along better than before, but because we don't live in the same room anymore. Yeah. We don't share the same stuff anymore. We're not around each other all the time. So we do have a better relationship, but I feel like there's always gonna, like, yeah. kind of like with my dad, there's always gonna be that. Y luego sí me llevo muy bien con ella. Like, if you see my videos, I feel like, you know, we, we're like besties yeah. because I'm I'm just that type of bubbly person, you know? If And especially she's my sister. Yeah. I do love being around her. I do love spending time with her because I feel like what we went through as teenagers keeps yeah. us connected. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm always gonna feel like that connection. The connection, yeah. Yeah, because she understands that and, like, we both understand my dad because... I feel like there's no one who understands like the way my dad has been except for us because yeah. we went through it. Like even my brothers, they didn't have it like we did. I always tell them like, you guys have it so easy as teenagers. We couldn't do this. We couldn't do that. We couldn't say this. We couldn't like all this. And you guys, los dejan que hagan yeah. lo que quieran. Or pues tampoco, obviamente. But you're like, where was but that like, energy yeah, when like, we were younger? Yeah. yeah. Y ellos como que, they've, obviously we're the older ones, so they've learned to like, listen to yeah. them more and stuff which is good but yeah our relationship is good i feel like we get along um she says that i'm gonna be the madrina to her children so period, period. i'm like so i guess you guys get along really good then <laughs> Tom, yeah. yes we do it's just like that Pero, feeling that it's like yeah. oh i remember that you fucked me over but you're like i'm past it but like Tom, yeah, me acuerdo, mi amor. also like i feel like my sister's a very hard person to to understand yeah sometimes i don't know where i stand like i know she loves me and stuff but sometimes I don't know, like, where yeah. I stand with her. So I feel like there's always that. And we talk about this, you know, like, she's going to yeah. be watching this. And, like, I tell her how I feel straight up. So, yeah, I feel like 
we're just comfortable with each other in that way and we do have a good relationship but there's always going to be that time that I remember that Kimmy snitched me out. <laughs> Quiero platicar un poquito de tu toxic relationship. Nos estás platicando un poquito que pues los problemas con tu hermana kind of stemmed because of your relationship. Obviamente nos cuentas that you were in a really toxic relationship for five years. Tú a los 13 años conoces a esta persona. Cuéntanos un poquito, give us a little backstory de cómo se conocieron, cómo te pidió él que fuera su novia and how the relationship was at the start. I met him when we first moved to the house that I still currently live in because I'm still living in that same in the same city and I was going to this middle school which actually I didn't even want to go to the middle school because I had seen so many reviews. I had looked at school uh -huh. I was like I don't want to go to a school like where the kids are like you know so I had l l researched this school and it was like very ghetto. I was yeah. like I don't want go there like, no, aquí me van a putear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to go there but I went there and it was really cool I like that I went there and that's where I met him I didn't know of him I didn't notice him until one of our mutual friends had told me about him and she was like oh like he thinks you're really cute I was like who I'm like I, don't, I haven't even I don't know who your friend is she thought I knew who he was yeah. I didn't know who he was she was like oh I'm always walking around with him at lunch and so one day I see them walking around and he's a tall tall guy I was like yeah. Like, whoa. One day, um, nos presenta, nos presenta, and whenever she presented us, he, like, looks me dead in the eye, like, dead in the fucking eye. Like, he was staring into my fucking soul, and he shakes my hand. And like that, I was like, why are you shaking my hand? You're yeah. a teenager. Like, why aren't you, like, dabbing me up or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's how we met. And so how we started talking was through this whole group chat. He was in it. I had this friend at the time, and he was basically telling him in the group chat, like, oh, hit up Miriam, like, text Miriam, this and that. Someone said in the group chat, oh, it would be so funny, Miriam. It would be so funny. It would be like a monkey and a gorilla because he was tall and big. He was like, <laughs> and I was like very like small and tiny. I've always been so small, tiny and petite. So someone put that in the group chat and I was like, hey, what? It, it had me yeah, laughing yeah, so yeah. bad. So that's something like I al always remember. He was like, I, I will. And after that, he stopped responding to the group chat like at all. And he didn't text me or anything. He didn't like reach out to me through text, DM or anything. Until the next day that he saw me at school, he came up to me, he walked up to me, presented himself and asked me if he could text me on Instagram. I was like, he was just staring dead into my yeah. soul again. So I was like, yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I, was, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. And I didn't even want to say yes. It was more of a like, 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 stop staring at me. Yes, bye. <laughs> ah, like, literally, huh? Yeah, literally. I it, hate direct eye contact. Like, I can only look at someone for so long before, like, I start getting awkward. So, like, now, if it's a guy that I'm attracted to, I like it. But uh, in that moment, I was just, like, like, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, it was spooked. intense. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, my God, you're looking at me so much, like, so deeply. He ended up texting me. We started talking through there. Um, But I feel like I was so young. I didn't really, like. I wasn't really looking for yeah. a boyfriend. I wasn't looking for a relationship. I always, this is one thing I always had in my head as a young, uh, as, as a little girl was like relationships as a little girl, as in my age, you know, in middle school, high school, they're more like not serious because people are not taking these seriously, you know? And that's how, that's the mentality I always yeah. had. So when I started talking to him, I told him that straight up. I was like, I just never thought about having a relationship. It, they don't last, you know? And I want something, like, isn't that crazy as a little mm -hmm. girl? Like, I was always like, I want something that's forever. I want something that's gonna last. Like, mi amor, tú que andas acá platicando del amor, mejor que tu tarea. Yeah. And he was probably like, damn, like, <laughs> like, what do you mean? You all try to settle down already. <laughs> you know, have kids, get married. And I'm like, like, bitch, no, we're like yeah. 13. But, and then I think it surprised him a lot that I told me I hadn't had a boyfriend at the time. Mm. I don't know what, like, now, obviously, like, not having a boyfriend at 13 yeah. is not a crazy thing. What, like, what? But at the time, I felt like, damn, I'm the only one who's never had a boyfriend. Yeah. So I told him that, and he was, like, so surprised by, by it, like, damn, you've never had a boyfriend. Y pues, we were talking for a while. He would walk me to my classes. He would treat me like a, like, literally a gentleman. He would spin me around. He would always make sure that I was on, like... As a 13-year-old, he knew the sidewalk rule. And I was like, you know, like, I didn't yeah. know the sidewalk rule. I actually didn't know it was a thing. Like, he he showed it to me before I knew. Wait, what is the sidewalk rule? I'm like, I don't oh. even fucking know. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> so, basically, when the guy walks, like, on the side where the cars are going oh, down. Oh, yes, you know? yes, uh-huh. Yeah, and he, since 13 years old, he always did that for me. And, um, like, he was always very respectful, gentleman-like towards me. Since I first started talking to him, I noticed that he talked to me, like, on a more mature level at 13 years old, more like a grown person would. And I liked that, but I was still in the like, like, 
I'm too young. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I don't trust it either. Like, what am I going to get myself? What am I getting myself into? And I felt like very cringe at like yeah. those things at first. I was like, he's holding my hand. Like, ugh. like I, it was cute, but yeah, also yeah, yeah. like, you know, I was like, no, like maybe I should just stop this. It doesn't feel like completely right. So I kind of like stopped talking to him. I met him at the beginning of the second semester. We met each other halfway through the school year and the rest of the school year after we stopped talking, he still kept trying to talk to me. Um, there was like two times where he would come up to me and he would like explain things to me. He, he, I remember this one time he was like, my uncle told me this thing about like relationships being like cars, like you have to like work on them and fix them for them to become brand new and really good to like he would like tell me Damn. things like that yeah as a 13 year old or he was 14 because he's yeah. a year older than me but i was like you're like, like what? what is your uncle <laughs> telling you <laughs> yeah and so i was like damn i didn't go back to talking to him eighth grade year um but then over the summer i don't know like what hit me that I, I was thinking about him yeah. and like, I was fine. Like I, when I was talking to him, I didn't feel like I gained really like strong, strong feelings yeah. for him. I didn't feel like I was like, you know, really liking him. So I was like finding it really weird that during the summer I was like thinking of him. I was thinking of like what he was doing during the summer. Yeah. And I swear to you the same night that I was like specifically really thinking of him, he hit me up and he like wanted to talk to me again. And it was like towards the end of summer. And so we were talking and he was going to go to a different high school, but he came to my high school specifically. We entered high school talking. Um, we started talking towards the end of summer and we entered high school talking. And I remember we actually had our first period together and I was so nervous because obviously like I, I was like, damn, like now I feel like I, I, I was thinking of him, yeah. like maybe I am liking him. And so I was really nervous to have that class with him. I was really always, that's how I knew I was starting to like him because yeah. I was starting to get very nervous when he would come around and he would like, you know, try to talk to me more and stuff. That same freshman year, in my sixth period, there was this girl who used to be really close to him. And I knew that, I knew that they were really close in middle school. So when she told me some things in class about him, she was telling me that during the summer that he was trying to pursue her and that he was trying to like, cause they, they were yeah. backdoor neighbors. So they lived behind each other. So she was telling me that he would try to go over and stuff like that and I was like, like, like what the he hell? just hit me up at the like during the end of summer you know so i was like what like and that like put so much doubt in me that again i was like okay no I'm never mind i'm pushing yeah. back and so i i think i had like stopped talking to him like a good two two to three times before i actually um started dating him yeah. and so this last time that i had stopped talking to him it hit me slower um I feel like at first I didn't really feel it. I was like, yeah. well, it was him that was trying to get at another girl, so I don't care. Um, but little by little, I was like, wait, like I kind of miss him. Like I'm thinking of him. Like yeah. why am I thinking of him? And so then comes my sister and she sees how like I'm already like going through these family things, personal things. And then how I'm also like kind of now starting to be sad over this guy because this guy, I feel like initially he made me feel like he was there. And not only that, like he talked to me in such a mature way yeah. that it made me feel like he understood things. Yeah. Like he knew what I was talking about and he knew how I felt. My sister saw how it was like affecting me in a way. And so she took the liberty to text him and tell him that like he should hit me up. So he did end up he did end up hitting me up. So the reason why I got with him was because of was your because sister. of my sister. Because she hit him up. If not, I wouldn't have had the balls to like go and text him like, hey, like I kind of do want to talk to you again. <laughs> So she kind of like put us on. She all put you guys together, but then years later, she was all trying to make you guys break up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, so what is it? Do you want me to be happy or not? Or not. Nos cuentas un poquito de eso. You know, you guys start dating. You know, obviamente anyone that follows you, you know, they've watched your Get Ready With Me's where you explain de lo tóxico que él era. What was that first moment that you realized he had become toxic or that first time where you're like, you know what? Like, he's been treating me like shit, but this is not how a man should treat a girl. What was that moment for you? From the beginning, I feel like our relationship wasn't right because I immediately, when my sister hit him up for all this stuff, we didn't go to the same school anymore. So I was like, well, how am I going to see him now? How are we going to talk now? How are we even going to establish a relationship if I literally cannot get out yeah. of my house? It was that, like, stuck because I was only... 14, 13. And so I had the bright idea of like starting to sneak out. I, that's another rebellious thing that I did growing up. I think I snuck out of my bedroom window more than 20 times in like four years. And I didn't get caught for years. I got caught eventually, but I didn't end up getting caught for years. And it was always only to see him. And yeah. that was like, it wasn't like, I was like, just like, oh, fuck it. Like, I just want to sneak out. Like, I just want to be bad. Obviously it was bad yeah. no matter what, because it's disrespecting your parents' house. 
But it was more like I felt like there was no way for me to connect with this guy. There's no way for me to have a relationship with him if I don't sneak out because or else how am I going to yeah. do it? For my sophomore year, one time that I got caught smoking, my parents wanted me to move high school. That's why I moved from my high school in person school. Um, I was like a sophomore. It was the beginning of sophomore year. And in the beginning of that year, I got caught. My parents wanted me to move and they gave me the choice to what school I wanted to go to. So I obviously chose to go to the same school that my boyfriend went to. So I started, con it was like a continuation type yeah. of school. Well, it was like a homeschool. Like you, it was for, you know, for the kids who want to like finish earlier. Like st independent studies, studies type of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. it was independent studies. So we would go every day if we wanted to, but we didn't, we weren't required to go every day. I obviously went yeah. every day to be able to see him. Um, but it was like a really easy it was really like you easy just show high school up, you got to do your task you bet. Yeah. yeah. It was like yeah, it was like that. And I wish I wouldn't have done that cuz I wanted the real high school experience, but you're young you and dumb. You get that. Yeah. <laughs> like you're young and dumb. And so um I feel like when I started going to school with him, I realized that we were having more arguments and I didn't realize his patterns of his arguments because it was like he felt jealous over literally nothing. Like I could be doing nothing and he would feel jealousy. So then he would make me feel jealous or he would feel the need to want to make me feel jealous in arguments, oh, you know, okay, okay. like he would argue with me over him feeling jealous over like one time I went to a, a 15 and obviously there's girls and guys yeah. there and it was my friend's 15. He didn't go. I went with my two friends, my two girlfriends, and he was trying to make up an argument that I was staring at guys and I obviously never did. He kind of like tried to make me feel jealous by telling me, oh, well, he had a best, a girl best friend at yeah. the time, which I never cared about because she was there like way before, you know, still like what? Um, so I, I didn't care. But in that argument, he told me he was like, well, you see, she likes me and you don't see me giving her attention, the attention. or, yeah, or yeah, yeah. something like that, you know? And I was like, well, first of all, I didn't stare at these guys. Second of all, what do you mean? Because now you're telling me your best friend that you hang out with likes you like that. Why? Are, what are you doing yeah. hanging out with a girl that likes you like that? That put a lot of doubt in my head. Yeah. But I think it was good because that putting that doubt in my head kind of like made me realize that like he was it, he was lying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that kind of like helped me open up more to like looking for more which was bad but obviously there was more I, when we were good he would tell me like oh no it was just a lie like it was mm. just to to get you mad right yeah, yeah, yeah like to make you feel like what i'm feeling and i was like now you made me insecure now you made me have doubts because you hang out with this girl and you were her chambelan for her quince and you hang out with her parents yeah. and toda la cosa so i was like what i made the mistake of um hitting up a, a guy friend that i had cut off because yeah. he had told me that that guy friend was saying a bunch of things about me that were disrespectful. So I obviously I ended up cutting that guy friend off. But when this had happened, it put a lot of doubt in me because I did. Then I didn't know. I was like, well, was he lying to me about that situation, too? And he just didn't want me to have that friend anymore yeah, in my yeah. life. I was like, what's going on? You know, like maybe he's trying to like isolate me kind of yeah. felt like that. And I didn't realize it because he also didn't like me having female friends. Like he would just think that if I had like. He obviously didn't say it. I don't like you having yeah. female friends. But because um, I would see the way that, like, he thought of every girl. Like, he thought every girl was like was, a hoe. Yeah, and was going to have a bad influence on me. And then I was going to be like that. And I feel like that was his mindset. And that's a really bad mindset yeah. for a 13-year-old to have. Like, Literally. You're, you're yeah, 13. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's probably, like, his childhood trauma and stuff. But anyways, I was like, well, I, I want to find out. I yeah. texted that guy friend again. And I was like, did this really happen like was this really said like and he obviously i don't trust that as a re reliable source now either but like um he obviously told me like no he's literally lying to you like i can't believe you don't see it this and that obviously yeah. it was i kept talking to my friend because he was a very close friend to me before i had gotten with my ex when i was just gonna ask him this question to get his view i ended up talking to him more like and we, obviously we, we were literally yeah, just yeah. friends we wouldn't like talk flirt anything and I didn't think he liked me like that we kept talking but my man didn't know because obviously yeah, he didn't yeah. like him they he didn't like him so um this guy ended up telling him that I was talking to him so then I was like okay well like like you know clearly like 
some I can't trust either of yeah, them. Yeah, I feel like yeah. then I was like, like well, both y'all. of you guys yeah, are lying yeah. to me. My ex finds out, and obviously I, I felt fucked up. Yeah. Like I felt like I'm keeping something from him that's not right, and I felt like the shittiest person ever. But he made it ten times worse. Like he made me feel like the worst girl on the planet Earth. But I wanted to find out whether he was lying to me about yeah. that, whether he was lying to me about his um, girl best friend as well. And so that broke our relationship. It was like already a year into the relationship yeah. and that broke our relationship up and it was when quarantine was happening. Mm-hmm. And right before quarantine, we were like, we weren't gonna be together. And then quarantine, like we go into quarantine, he hits me up. I was so devastated whenever he had broken up with me for this. Cause I feel like I was so like young, dumb, like blindly in love yeah. that I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't, all I, I was doing was crying 24 seven more than I like, already would during quarantine when quarantine first started he was willing to like work it out yeah. and talk to me again and isn't that crazy like he literally lied and he made he was fucked up yeah, yeah, yeah. but he still also made me feel fucked up i understand my issue because i feel like even now people yeah. were like girl you had no wrong but i feel like i shouldn't have like kept me talking yeah. to that friend it anyway. just looks like, sus yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. looks sus and i admit that and but i knew that deep down there wasn't nothing yeah. like actually disrespectful that I was actually doing like yeah, texting yeah. him things or anything like that. He was willing to work things out at the beginning of quarantine. And then he kind of like broke it off like two weeks later is talking about like, oh, I can't do it. He was really big on trust and loyalty trust, yeah, and like yeah. all that stuff. He was like, I really can't do this. I can't, he was like, I cannot um, trust you anymore. Like I can't do this. So we broke up again for like a month, a two months maybe. Oh, and shit. It was like the worst two months of my life. It was during summer and it was like the worst. I was smoking more than ever, obviously. And like, it was literally the worst for me. I couldn't do anything. Like I felt like I literally physically could not do anything. I couldn't think of nothing else. Like that time in my life was literally just like focused literally on On the heartbreak. Like, I don't know. It was, it took like a whole toll on me. And the only one who saw me go through that was my sister. Then he hits me up two months later. I was still going through it, but I was doing better in the way where I was becoming a little more accepted yeah, to yeah, it, yeah. you know? Then he comes along and like, he's talking to me normally and then he wants to see each other and we just kind of get back into the, we get back into being together, you know? This is when it really started to become way more toxic because I feel like it kind of changed everything. I I found out that he was sleeping with another girl while he hit me back up. Oh and then, shit, and ¿Cómo then, cuenta de eso? I snuck out. I went to his house. Another thing, I, I actually also was sexually active very young, which was also something that I feel like wasn't good for me. But um, we had just, you know, done yeah. that. And he he showed me his phone. I was looking through it. And I didn't expect to find a thing. But then I just see this message of an, some girl name with an M. It was like an initial M and a heart next to no, it wasn't a national name. It was, it was a full name. I don't want to say it. So I see the name and it was, it started with my letter and it had a heart next to him. Both of our names were the only two with hearts in it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, who is this other girl? And he told me that it was his aunt. He tried playing it off like it was his aunt. And I was like, not even your mom has a emoji on your yeah, contact yeah, yeah. list. Why does this girl have an emoji? Why does your aunt have an emoji? Right, yeah, yeah, your yeah, aunt. Yeah. Why does your aunt have an emoji? And so I didn't believe him, obviously. And he kind of like looked sus. Like he just looked like so Te guilty. Quitó el teléfono? He looked guilty. No me lo quitó. No me lo quitó. Cause it's cause it was a deleted message. He had deleted yeah. the messages, like the chat, oh, and then okay, she had okay. answered. So it was like that one text and it was her saying good nighty. Like it was her saying good nighty because he told her that he was gonna go to sleep. In reality, he was sneaking out with me. To see you. Yeah. Ay, hijo de su madre. Yeah. Y luego, pues, I started immediately bursting out in tears. And it was, like, the worst, like, like I don't know, my, my heart, like, fell. Like, I was, yeah. like, I would have never imagined him because of how much he preached loyalty and how much he talked about loyalty and trust and building good relationships and bonds. Like, I felt like that's what he wanted. Yeah. So why would he go and mess it up? Me empieza a decir que... He brings God into it, and I'm like, girl, like, why are you bringing God into this? He was like, Mary, I'm like, I was gonna, I was literally talking to God. I felt like, like, if, if I couldn't tell you, like, for him to give me a way to tell you, and I was like, girl, like, you know, damn yeah, well, you yeah, were yeah. not gonna tell me. I'm like, me. God ain't gonna help you I'm in like, this one. I know, yeah, I'm yeah. like, he, please keep him out. I was so furious. I wanted to leave. I couldn't, like. So, in ese momento, te dijo, like, okay, you know what? This girl and me have been having sex, or what was that? ¿Cómo te dices cuenta tú de eso? I looked at him dead in the eye. I was like, this is not your aunt. He was, he looked at me in the eye, too, and he was like, 
like he literally nodded like that. He was like, and and when I started crying and telling him all these things, pues él me estaba queriendo así como que change my mind, yeah, yeah, consolarme yeah. and stuff. After I had found that out that night, I feel like that completely changed everything from then on because not only did I have so much insecurity in me now and not only did I have so much distrust now and um, all these things, I it, our relationship was not the same. And in trying to save it, like it got worse and worse every yeah. single time. I knew it was toxic whenever I saw myself always looking at who he was following and always looking at what he was liking and always like, like trying to see if he was hiding something yeah. from me because I had that in the back of my head. He had already did me wrong in yeah, the past. Yeah. He's gonna do it again. So I feel like it was very hard for me to accept the fact, the way he was changing, even though I saw the ways he was changing. But I always saw the guy who like, for my 14th birthday, the first birthday that he met me, like he bought me a journal because I opened myself up yeah, to yeah. him and I told him how I was trying to journal to like make my, make myself feel better yeah. and like express everything that was happening in my life. Like he was actively listening to what I was going through and being there for me. So, and also he would share his traumas with me and I felt like we connected on yeah. our traumas together. So I felt like he understood me and I, I felt like I tried to understand him and I, I felt like I just wanted us to kind of like come together, grow yeah, and yeah. from our traumas together as a couple. And that's the way I saw it. And that's what I was trying to make it even after the toxicity, even after it started to become toxic, after I saw him changing, all I could see was that beginning yeah. relationship that we could have built, you know? Yeah. But it just came to a point where it starts from like little arguments to like, checking their location and checking their location way too much and stalking their friends and stalking all their followers and stalking for girls that they would follow and stalking your own explore page to see yeah. what girls on the explore page he was liking up. It was like things like that. And it was always girls from around our area. Yeah. So it literally made me more insecure because I was like, is he seeing these girls? Like he knows these girls because they are in our yeah, area, yeah, yeah. you know? You know, nos cuentas un poquito that, you know, you started going through all these like toxic, you know, situations. What do you feel like for you was like your final straw? What was the moment that you're like, you know what? Ya no quiero más. Like, what was that moment for you? He claims that he was on drugs, on pills. I don't know what was going on, but he started to change a lot in his behavior too. He started to threaten me. He would have like a, a bag with him sometimes and he would threaten to take a knife out and to like hurt oh, me shit. just so that I would like, so that things would be his way, so that I would listen to him and things would be his way. Um, I remember one time he got so mad that I wasn't like arguing with him over something so petty. He spilled the water all over me in my own car. I remember um, he, literally called me the worst things, made me feel like the worst ways. But then still, whenever I told him this isn't going anywhere, he would still be like, no, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like manipulation. And I feel like it was in a moment where I felt like it was gonna get physical if I didn't leave. Cause I felt like it was already in a way getting physical. Yeah. If he was like spilling water on me and then not only threatening to stab me, one time he even like held my hand like to the max so that I wouldn't leave. Um, I feel like all those little things made me in my head think, well, if this is going to get physical and I don't want it to go there, that's one thing I told myself, like, there's no way I'll ever, like, get like, physical. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. I can't do that. It was so draining to not only go through, not only be going through things with my dad, but also now be going through things with my partner. When at first, when I was going through things with my dad, he was there for me and he was helping me and he was like, being there for me and he understood me and he was like doing all these things for me to make me feel better like I had someone like I had someone to count on like I had someone at least to like talk to to then like him completely like acting out and he reminded me a lot of like it también era bien tóxico en la manera que no quería que me vistiera with gym clothes in the gym oh, okay okay Así like que, very possessive very yeah. possessive like if there was a guy who talked to me and like he thought that I talked to him a wrong way or something he was like what are you doing like you're being yeah. a hoe like and just things like that. And in the process of it, I also became toxic. I feel like I always I always looked to see if he was looking at another girl yeah. and things like that. When it was like that and we argued, the arguments would get so bad Gosh. to a point where it was like banging on the wall. He was like throwing things in his room. He was pulling his hair. He was <sighs> like punching himself. I remember when I broke up with him, he punched himself in my own car because like he didn't want me to break up like, with him. Literally like that, like I swear. <gasps> Oh my God, yeah. yeah, yeah, that must have been scary. It was, I felt unsafe. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 
and it was so like like whoa like I felt like I had no one because because we also grew up with each other. Yeah. This was already when he was like 19 years old. So like the breakup was like the last official breakup was literally like maybe a year ago. Yeah, <gasps> it was not that long ago. Um, I was 18 when I broke up with him. We grew up with each other. Yeah, so yeah. to see him speak so maturely and speak like he wants to get salida adelante con su vida because he also went through a lot of things growing up. So I was always like. Le, que, le tiene ganas a la vida. Le yeah. tiene ganas a la vida. Quiere ayudar a su familia. Quiere salir he was, adelante. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. always talked about wanting to help his family. But also his childhood trauma also didn't let him yeah. process things. And, like, I feel like that's really what messed yeah. him up. And I, to the, like, right now, I hope he, like, can process, he's processing his childhood trauma better. Because I would, I yeah. wanted to be one to help him and to be there for him. That's why I said, like, I have these problems. You have these problems. Like, we love each other. Why not like grow together, help each other grow? You know, that's how I always saw it. Pero el cambio de otra. And you know, that's that's what yeah. happens. People process things in different ways. So we grew apart. He grew out. He grew apart in a different way than what I did. I feel like I was trying to work on myself, trying to feel better, trying to have peace and in my life. And he was just going down. And he was going down and making it worse for me because now it was becoming abusive, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive. Um, he would call me the worst things and I don't think I need to like get into detail of all the things but you guys could imagine I feel yeah. like I, I've said a couple of things you let go of the relationship obviously it was a really hard relationship to let go because pues estabas con él desde muy chiquita what piece of advice can you give to someone who's gone through a breakup that maybe feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel don't let yourself lose yourself over anyone because I feel like at the end of the day when you're trying to do something more for someone else when you can't even get right with yeah. yourself or you're not even right with yourself, it's not any help to you or that person. It's worse. And then I feel like if I would have left it sooner, maybe we could have both yeah. evolved in different ways. We wouldn't have put each other through all those yeah. things that we put each other through. I don't know. I feel like um, never let yourself go over anyone. I feel like when you know when it's not right anymore, yeah. but you are so attached to that feeling and you're so attached to that person, and that relationship that you you're not willing to accept it and you're not willing to like let yourself move on and as much as it hurts because let me tell you like it i know how much it hurts to like let go of something that you felt could be some the, like the best thing of your life um i think it's the hardest thing i've had to do in my life was accept that he was that way now and that he wasn't going to change and he wasn't going to do better for our relationship i had to accept that and start to grow on my own yeah. because growing together wasn't working for yeah. us y yo pienso que es exactamente eso, el aceptar that just because things were a certain way one day doesn't mean that that's how it's always going to be. And maybe for a long time you were holding on to like that 14 year old kid that you met at the beginning. Pero ya como el adulto ya es muy diferente and it's good that you got out of that toxic situation because we can never know en donde estuvieras tú at this moment. Y no quiero platicar. Un poquito de las redes sociales. Ya vamos a terminar esta entrevista, amigas. Obviamente nos estabas platicando that you first started doing social media because, you know, at the time you weren't able to apply for DACA. You felt very hopeless. You know, you started doing social media y empezaste a ganar aunque sea un dinerito. Salió de ahí, you know, some money. Cuéntanos qué fue el momento para ti that you're like, you know what? Maybe I can make this my full-time job. Did you have, like, a video that went viral? Did you have, like, a sponsorship, your first big payment? ¿Qué fue ese momento para ti? When I first started TikTok in quarantine, I was so, like, yeah. naive to the whole social media world. I didn't... I thought there was some type of privilege to, like, be on social media. Yeah. I, I was like, not just anyone can do that, you know? And my, my cousins would tell me, like, just post. Like, post a video, post a video. And they knew I did makeup. They're like, why don't you post makeup videos? And it was quarantine. And makeup for a lot of those years was uh, another distraction to me where I just felt like I thought of nothing. I was just doing my makeup, feeling like a bad bitch. <laughs> Even though if my environment yeah, wasn't yeah. like the best, I was a bad bitch. And so anyways, I filmed that one video during quarantine and it was my first two TikToks. I remember we thought that TikTok was cringy and stuff. So I had not posted yeah, on yeah, TikTok yeah. ever since Musical.ly became TikTok. So then when I finally did, it was one transition video to the makeup tutorial that I did, that I posted the makeup tutorial yeah. neck, like my first TikTok went viral. And um, from there, I was like, maybe I couldn't make, keep making videos. So I, I started to make videos, but like I, that, I was 16 and I was barely going through all these things with yeah. my ex. I feel like, I think that was when I had, the, I think that was the first time we had broken up. Okay. So um, I started when I was 16. I was still going through all these things with my ex. I feel like my 
relationship was what stopped me from most of the things that I could have done because I was going through all these things with him. I wasn't, I feel like I wasn't growing on social media. I wasn't able to be yeah. more of like myself. And so I feel like I wasn't um, doing exactly what I wanted to do with social media when I first started. And once I actually left my ex, that's when I, which was like last year, 2023 was when I really started to like grow my platform. Yeah. Um, and then it was, in 2023, when obviously I was 18, I was like, I'm done. I need a job. Like I can't just not be working anymore. My little brother is working. I tried to look at a. I tried to look for a job at my gym because they were hiring, and I had seen that they were hiring without a social security. So I was like, okay, like, like my I, opportunity, my yeah, opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my friend worked there, and she was. They were paying, I believe, like 11 the hour. Oh shit. Y mi papá me dijo, yo no quiero que trabajes aquí, ahí. Mi papá me dijo, no, no trabajes ahí. Yeah, no, ni el mínimo. Because if you don't have like 20 something yeah, yeah, workers, yeah. they can't pay you that much, I think. My dad did not let me stay in that job or go for that job that was only going to pay me $11 an hour, I believe it was. And I didn't. He told me to just keep doing with my videos what I was doing. And that's something that I really appreciate of him because I feel like he kind of pushed me into like, just, just do your videos. You can do it. And I really appreciate him for that, to be honest. Months after I didn't take the job at the gym, I got contacted by Urban Decay and I didn't have a manager. So I, it was like crazy to me. I was like, like, like Urban Decay? Like, yeah, yeah, that's a big ass brand. Yeah, yeah, I was like Urban Decay. And so I, I took it, like I did what I could. I didn't even know how to, you know how you give your rates and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know how, I didn't know how rates worked or anything, but I got a partnership with Urban Decay and I was making videos for them. It was more like of a longer term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making videos for them every week for like about three months. And so in those three months, I was making all this money um, through just them. And then plus the TikTok creator yeah. fund was already like paying better too. So I was like, I can actually do this. Like yeah. if I put my all into this and I, I really try, I can actually like make social media a full-time job for me. and. You know, it, it could be something that I could um, make you know, a living. Mine. Yeah, and I feel like that was so special and like it made me so happy because I wasn't born in the U.S. and it was going to be a whole different life for me if yeah. this wasn't an opportunity that came into my life. So I feel like, I don't know, social media is like the most precious yeah. thing to me that I have because it's like, I don't know, it was what it was what helped me grow. It was what gave me hope and it was what you know, made yeah. me feel like there was even more, like, out there for me than what I thought. Yeah, yeah, para terminar esta entrevista el día de hoy, porque yo sé que ustedes allá en casita les encantó, yo quiero saber qué le espera o qué metas tienes tú en los próximos cinco años. One thing I was actually just talking to you about was getting on YouTube. Yeah. But I feel like when you start on, a, like, say, I started on TikTok and you're so used to posting on TikTok and that platform, and then you're trying to, like, post on TikTok, post on Instagram, post on all these platforms and then on top of that you have like your personal life yeah. and like you know i feel like it's so hard to balance but it's also a me thing i feel like that's one thing that i want to work on myself is very much my time management and getting on youtube is one of the biggest things for me um but also is maybe moving out soon okay maybe. five years later after this video you guys vamos a mirar a Miriam con su apartamento y todo <laughs> Five years later. <laughs> What's next for me is still growing. As a 20 year old, I feel like I still have a lot of growing to do. And my goal in life is to genuinely be happy. Yeah. And obviously that's like anyone's goal, but I don't know. I feel like that's an everyday thing for me. I want to work towards my future. I feel like what keeps me going is thinking of what I can do in my future. Yeah. And thanks to social media, I feel like it's, it's helpful and it's literally the best thing that's happened to me. So, yeah. I honestly think you're on a great path. Like, yeah, in muy poquito te vamos a mirar, you know, accomplishing all these goals que tienes tú. You're just going to expand everywhere. And I'm so happy to see where you are in five years from now. Yo sé que allá en casita también a ustedes les gustó esta entrevista. So thank you once again for being here with us today y platicar de todo lo que platicamos. Yes. Era mucho. Era mucho, Era pero mucho. yo sé que allá en casa van a quedar en picadas. Si quieren y no si quieren, vayan y sigan a Miriam on all her social medias, which I'll leave down below, as well as on the screen right here. Y también no se les olvide que me sigan a mí on all my social medias para que no se pierdan any future episode. And with that being said, thank you once again for being here. Thank you so much for having me again. And thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Yay, you did good. Thank you.